everybody. Okay. I'm John Ray. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We'd like to get this meeting started. Uh, before we start a meeting, can I have everybody rise? We want to do the national pledge allegiance to the flag. Flag's off to my right. <clears throat> To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was asked to inform everybody for the fire exits, main doors go out to the right to get to your stairs, or go out the door to the left to get to the stairs for your exit. This meeting is being held in compliance with the provisions of Chapter 231 of PL 1979. This meeting is being held in compliance with the provisions of Chapter 231 PL 1979, known as the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice that this meeting was furnished to the county papers and posted in the Hall of Records. With that, this meeting is now open. We're going to start off. As a normal process, we're going to do our attendance, our roll. Mitch Booty. Fred. Grace Rainforth. Fred. Harv Strauss. Here. Richard Throckmorton. He is going to be absent. Scott Johnson. Here. Thomas Branch. Present. Valerie David. Present. Leo Lomangino. Present. Robert MacArthur. And I do know Sam Poston it won't be here either. He is absent. We go to our first section, our third section, which is our old business section. Approval of old minute, our old minutes for the November 16th meeting. Uh, does anybody have anything to add to the minutes? Any corrections do, need to be made? May I have a motion to move the minutes? Okay. May I have a second on it, please? And there was any add on to any old business, which is an uh, answer of no. All in favor of moving the minutes? Aye. All opposed? Okay. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Chris Beekman. He was going to do a little forwarding of some information for the crowd. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. I can. All right, I'm just going to read off a memorandum to start off the meeting. Um, it's really just going to relay some information related to the SWAC process in receiving applications, um, just to give uh, kind of some clarity as to what's been going on in the process and also give some information related to the specific application that's before you. So, the purpose of this memorandum is to advise the public of general information related to applications that seek admittance to the county's solid waste management plan and also specific information related to the pending application of Resource Engineering, LLC. First, speaking generally, the application process for an amendment to the Solid Waste Management Plan begins with an application to the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, or SWAC. Once an initial application is submitted, SWAC members and staff spend a considerable amount of time collecting additional materials, visiting the site to get a better sense of the proposal, and obtaining updates at regularly held meetings from applicants until a point is reached in which the application is deemed complete. One item that is required with all applications prior to a vote occurring by SWAC is a letter from the municipality in which the applicant's property is located relaying its official position regarding the application. Once an application is deemed to be complete, a public hearing will be held and SWAC will vote to determine whether the application for plan amendment should be recommended to the freeholders for approval. SWAC does not approve the actual application. Should, should the council not recommend the application to the freeholders, then the application is in effect denied outright. In the event SWAC recommends the application to the freeholders, then the freeholders will review all submissions, 
official position of the municipality, comments from the general public, either oral or written, and anything else the freeholders may deem relevant in the review of the application that has become part of the record to make a decision. Should the pre freeholders deny the application, then the resolution then a resolution will be drafted to that effect and the matter will be closed, pending any potential appeal of the decision. Should the freeholders approve the application for the plan amendment, then the application and all submissions that have become part of the record are sent to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, or the NJDEP, for review and further approvals before anything can be done on the site. The NJDEP is then tasked with reviewing the county submittal. There are two separate and distinct NJDEP reviews. The first review is of the plan amendment, once approved by the freeholders, and submitted by the county. The commissioner of the department has 150 days to review and issue a decision regarding the plan amendment. That decision occurs through a certification. This certification can be an approval, certification with modification, or rejection of the subject plan amendment. The second NJDEP review is of an application submitted by the applicant for a solid waste facility permit which will entail a review on site design, processing equipment and solid waste handling, storage and transfer or disposal operations. It should be noted that the applicant cannot submit the above noted application until the plan amendment has been certified by the commissioner of the NJDEP. Just to note, if the applicant submits an application for a solid waste facility permit seeking a, a capacity of 100 tons or greater, the NJDEP is required to hold a public hearing prior to issuing any decision regarding the application. The public hearing is held in the host community of the proposed facility. Also, the applicant is required to obtain an A901 approval to collect and transport solid waste or operate a solid waste facility within the state prior to the issuance of any solid waste facility permit for the proposed facility. So in essence, any application for a plan amendment must go through a rigorous application process and pass several levels of scrutiny before any operations can, may be conducted on the subject site. Key to any application is of course the impact it has on the local community and this element is a main reason why the public has been given an opportunity to speak this evening. Now turning our attention to the matter at hand. The applicant first submitted his application in 2015. At the onset of the application, SWAC staff and council met with Howe Township to discuss the proposed operations and advised that a letter setting forth an official position from the township would be required in order for the application to move forward. Over the course of several months, the applicant submitted updates to plans at the request of SWAC and Howe Township in order to meet concerns of both parties. Several meetings were held in which the applicant provided updates to SWAC and advised of progress made on the site to meet conditions set by the township. On or about March 6, 2017, the applicant had met all the conditions posed by the township and how issued a letter of support of the application so that it could proceed to a vote. SWAC placed the matter... Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. If there's any comments that are going to be like that, you're going to actually be removed from the meeting. So please let me finish the memorandum. The public will be given a chance to make your opinions vocal at the end, but do not interrupt us. SWAC placed the matter on its agenda for a vote and on May 18, 2017, unanimously, unanimously recommended that the plan amendment be sent to the freeholders for their review and approval. Prior to the freeholder meeting, to review the plan amendment scheduled for July 27, 2017, the county received letters from town officials that conflicted with the original position of Howe Township. Based on the conflict, the county removed the matter from the freeholder's agenda so that the conflicting letters could be addressed and the official position of the township clarified. Following the freeholder meeting, the township of Howe submitted a second letter voicing its opposition to the application for plan amendment. Members of the public also sought to voice their concerns with approving the application and the impact the operations would have on the local community. As such, the county determ has determined it would be the best course of action to permit the public an opportunity to learn more regarding the application and voice their opinion in a public forum. We are here this evening to give the public the opportunity to speak on the matter. The applicant will first be given the floor to explain in more detail the pending application and proposed use of the site to hopefully clarify any questions that may exist. 
Once the applicant has finished its presentation, the public will be given the opportunity to question the applicant through the council to seek further clarification on the proposed use. Please be clear, this is not an opportunity to cross-examine the witness or present a case against the application. It is simply to seek clarity on the presentation made by the applicant. If this instruction is not adhered to, you will be asked to return to your seat with no further questioning being administered. Following the question and answer portion, the public will be given the opportunity to comment on the overall application. Each member of the public that wishes to speak must sign in on the sign-in sheet. The SWAC will call each name in the order in which they appear on the sign-in sheet, and each individual will be given a two-minute window to voice his or her opinion on the matter. When you are called, please state your name and address, and please speak clearly so that a proper record can be made by the court reporter. Please be sure to listen carefully to the individuals that speak before you are called as the SWAC will be seeking to avoid duplicative statements. It should lastly be noted that a written comment period related to the application began last Sunday, January 21st, 2018, and will remain open until February 21st, 2018. If you wish to make a written comment to indicate your position, you may submit the same for consideration once the matter is placed in the Freehill Agenda. Thank you, Advance, for your cooperation, and we look forward to a good meeting this evening. All right? And um, just so everybody is also aware, as we do call names, I will be keeping a timer up here. When it gets down to approximately 30 seconds, I am going to just put my hand up to indicate that to you, just in case you need to summarize anything. Again, if you, do, if you feel that you weren't able to get everything out, you can submit a written submission to the freeholders, which will be reviewed as part of their packet before they make a decision. So, without any um, further delay, I'll turn it over. The sign-in sheet is up here. It's, I'm sorry, to my left. Just to let everybody know, um, they're going to open up the back kitchen, which does have a television in it, that's going to broadcast live uh, the meeting that goes on tonight. So if anybody would like to take a seat, um, as opposed to standing uh, in the meeting room, uh, you're welcome to do so. So that's going to be in the back left-hand corner. Thank you, Chris. We're going to move it over to section number four. Our regular business, I'm going to turn the floor over to Resource Engineering. All right, I'll start by asking if everyone can hear me. Okay. Good evening, SWAC members, county officials, and members of the public. My name is Patrick Ward. Uh, I work for Insight Engineering, and we are the site engineers for resource recycling. We're here tonight to provide an informational overview of our application, its history to date, and the proposed development at the property. So, As everyone knows, our property is 34 Randolph Road, known as Block 5, Lot 4 on the Township Tax Map. We're located on the southeast corner of County Route 547 and Randolph Road. The site is within the Township's Special Economic Development Zone, or the SED Zone. The zone is more or less an industrial zone with permitted uses such as warehousing, manufacturing, and utilities. Our surroundings reflect the zone we're in. We have a large undeveloped wooded parcel to the east with upcoming industrial development plan there, an electrical substation run by JCPNL immediately to the south, along with a junkyard. We also have industrial and construction uses across Randolph Road um, to the north of the site. The site at 34 Randolph Road is actively disturbed with the current recycling operation and we have no freshwater wetlands, streams, or endangered species habitat on or adjacent to the subject property. The map you see before you is representative of the site conditions and its surroundings today. So as you can see, as I just stated, lot three to the east is a wooded parcel that's currently undeveloped um, but zoned for the SED zone. Lot eight below to the south is the JCPNL substation. Lot 10, just to the west of Lot 8, is the junkyard. And across Randolph Road to the north, you see 
industrial, warehousing, or construction uses. There are different zones across 547 to the west, across the county road, and that railroad right away that you see on the tax map. Resource Recycling acquired this property eight years ago as part of an agreement with the previous property owner in the state. The site was in a state of deferred maintenance and needed attention immediately. As part of the acquisition, Resource was required to clean things up. They committed to the Township of Howell, Monmouth County, and the state of New Jersey that they would perform the cleanup, and they did. After significant financial investment and several months of remediation efforts, Resource Recycling applied to the county and the state to permit and establish the wood recycling facility that exists today. This here is a Google image taken in 1995 of the property and the surrounding area. Centrally located on the image is 34 Randolph Road. This is a, another image taken in 2016 showing the current condition of the property. You can see some of the expansion surrounding the property and the current recycling activities on site. Resources here before the SWAC to advance their current recycling operation by developing the property with a transfer station. So now I'll detail some of the application history. Um, I'll try not to repeat anything Mr. Beekman said, um, but in, two, in August 2015, Resource Recycling was ready to apply to the Monmouth County SWAC to include its proposed transfer station into the County Waste Management Plan. Over the course of over two years, um, Resource has worked with the SWAC very closely and township officials very closely to hear any concerns, comments, listen to them, consider them, and address them. We worked on, with the township on many different facets. Initially, site plan requirements, conformance with the master plan, signalization of the Randolph Road and 547 intersection. These were all comments that were brought up with the township, among many others, and resource committed to addressing all of the comments offered by the township. The SWAC is a council of industry professionals um, that, have, that had pointed comments regarding our application from day one, and we listened and we addressed all of those comments. We also worked with the state of New Jersey. One of the application requirements is to have a pre-application conference with the New Jersey Department of uh, Environmental Protection Division of Solid Waste. Uh, we met with the DEP, we had a pre-application conference, we digested some of their comments, and we've worked with state personnel from day one. Patrick, hold on one second. I uh, just was notified there's some uh, concerns with the public about uh, the speaker going on for more than two minutes. This is the presentation that's being presented. Now, this is, this is for your benefit so that the public is caught up with what's going on with the application. As I indicated in my initial memorandum, they're going to be presenting, and then the public will have a chance to question. All right? Thank you. Sorry, Patrick. Thank you. So today, Resource currently operates a wood recycling facility at the property. It accepts tree parts, such as stumps, branches, and brush, <coughs> and they process that material into landscaping mulch, clean wood chips for playgrounds, and topsoil. All processing activity today occurs outdoors and the material is stockpiled on site until it is processed and removed. So what we're proposing now in the future, we're seeking to advance the recycling efforts on site by expanding to a transfer station and I'll explain later what a material recovery facility. We will accept construction demolition debris and that includes such items as copper, aluminum, steel, gypsum, timber, plastic, and glass. The goal for our facility is to recycle 70% of the materials on site that would normally end up in New Jersey landfills. So the layperson may ask, what is a transfer station? And it's a good question. A transfer station collects debris from smaller point sources. So think contractors, homeowners, demolition companies. It processes and sorts the material on site, internal to the main building, then transports it in bulk, meaning in larger vehicles, to the final disposal sites. Transfer stations are an integral part of the waste stream. They reduce the cost of transporting waste. They reduce fuel consumption and vehicle maintenance costs. 
and they produce overall uh, less overall traffic. Sorted material in <laughs> sorted material in larger trailers equals less trucks. If you, if you can't control yourselves, you're going to be asked to leave. And I would ask if any other officer sees anybody out of hand, you can, uh, you can escort them out of the room. Thank you. This leads to less air emissions and less road wear. This material recovery facility is an advanced transfer station in that it has the capability to accept and recycle material as it comes in. It will be a recycling transfer station. This leads to less material in our landfills. There's two statements I want to make tonight. One, a recycling transfer station is not a dump. Also, it's not a landfill. And these are representative photos of what a main transfer station building looks like. The difference here is that we've heard the ha comments from Howell Township, and we've addressed those comments, particularly the facade improvements for a building like this. In the SED zone, there are facade improvement standards that you cannot have a broad face of a building for a certain distance without a breaking of that facade. The plans presented to SWAC, the plans presented to the Township of Howell have addressed those concerns and we've met that ordinance requirement. Another difference here is that the overhead doors will not be facing any public view, view sheds. They will not face the public right of way, they will not face any neighbor except the JCPNL substation. The diagram you see before you is a simplified process of how material goes through a transfer station. Materials unloaded inside the building from a smaller trailer incoming. It's moved to a sorting area and processed. The sorted material types are loaded individually onto a larger trailer for delivery to its ultimate destination. So why here, why this property? One, we're very close to major local and state roads. We have I-195, County Route 547, and U.S. Route 9. This is critical for all parties involved. The site is currently operating as a state-approved recycling facility, so it already has state approval to function on that level. We're taking a facility with outdoor recycling operations and internalizing most of the processing in a new facility. We're in the SED zone of the township. We're adjacent to industrial and warehouse uses. Our type of use fits into the surrounding. We're right next door to the JCPNL substation. And in my opinion, this works in two ways. One, the substation is not a sensitive receptor. It's a public utility. And number two, the property once developed, our property, will actually screen more of the substation from the public view shed than it exists today. And finally, this is a convenient location for both Monmouth and Ocean counties. We're right on the border of both counties. And this map here shows our location with the, the gold star just at the border of Monmouth and Ocean County. Owl Township and the extents of the township are the shaded area in red. And that we're showing potential lengths of the current truck routes that our facility can intercept from the other transfer stations up further north in Monmouth County. Please note that sizable portions of these routes go right through Howell Township. So now I'll discuss our transfer station, our facility, and, and what we're proposing. So first and foremost, we have the main transfer station building. It's going to be centrally located on site, and that's where all the processing of material moves inside the new building. We're going to have an administration building with offices, maintenance areas, and restrooms. There will be a separate scale house. We're going to have three scales to maintain efficiency in and out of the site. The site layout lends itself to the transfer station. Next slide, Jay. We have an elongated entrance drive for the queuing of incoming trucks. The overhead doors, as I said before, of the transfer station will face the JCPNL substation. The public will not see the tipping operations that occur within the building. We'll have a separate access driveway for visitors and employees. Please note that we've discussed this at length with not only township officials, but also the fire bureau of the township. This is like any other new development in that we'll provide the other site improvement features that you see on municipal site plans. We'll provide additional landscaping around the perimeter of the site, as well as around the buildings. 
There will be new lighting throughout the site for safety and security. There will be newly paved areas for all vehicle traffic. And we will address stormwater management and water quality via systems on site in accordance with state standards, just like any other major development site plan. We'll provide perimeter fencing and locking gates at all entrances and exits. Next slide. As I said previously, resources taking in construction and demolition debris. This is technically called Type 13C material. And the slide before you lists some of the examples of, of what can be included in this material. To, to put it simply, this is the result of the demolition of houses and non-residential buildings. So what are the benefits? This is a full site development of a currently undeveloped property. There will be a substantial reduction in stockpiling on site and external recycling operations. The processing and sorting of incoming material will take place within the main building. This is better for the surrounding area. There will be new landscaping, lighting, fencing, pavement, and stormwater management measures. The facility will fit within its surroundings, which will be developed with warehouse and industrial uses. Substantial truck mileage currently traversing the township will be reduced. This means a smaller carbon footprint. The facility will be a commercial tax rateable for the township. This means fewer taxes. The county, the, the county intersection and township roadway improvements that resource will perform as part of this project are significant. They too mean a less tax burden on the residents. Finally, there's a host community fee associated with the facility. Howell Township will receive a fee from resource for every ton of material processed. Again, lesser tax burden. Business hours will be normal, Monday through Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 7 to noon. Over 40 local jobs will be created for the facility. Material drop-off and sorting will occur indoors. This means less noise, less dust, and better air quality than today. Everything that comes in will be sorted the same day. We'll have smaller trucks coming in and larger trucks going out. This leads to a smaller carbon footprint. Next, next slide. We're accepting construction and demolition debris only. Household trash, recyclables, and the like are not permitted to be accepted. They must go to the landfill. We'll never accept anything other than construction and demolition debris. So what else are we doing? There's a couple things. We're widening and repaving Randolph Road along our entire frontage. That's a quarter mile of road widening, adding a new shoulder and new pavement. I want to make mention that this was a specific comment offered by the township. It's in their master plan, and we willingly accepted and addressed that comment. Resources adding a traffic signal at the 547 and Randolph intersection. There will be a left turn lane and a right turn lane dedicated separately. The road dedications and widening meet the requirements of the master plan. We will have no stormwater discharge off site. Everything will be handled on site. That's a very important statement I would like to make. So now I'd like to turn the mic over to John Ray, resources traffic expert, to give a breakdown of this application in relation to local traffic. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Ray, REA, from McDonough and Ray Associates. I'm a professional engineer. Uh, we are based in Manasquan, New Jersey, and we were tasked with the uh, the task of performing the traffic impact study for the application. And it was as a result of this traffic impact study that we determined that signalization of the Route 547 and Randolph Road intersection was necessary. Uh, we conducted a full day of traffic counts at that location. We looked at the volumes that were utilizing that intersection and currently today, as everybody knows, Randolph Road is an unsignalized T intersection at County Route 547. During peak hours, there are fairly lengthy queues on Randolph Road, and motorists entering Route 547 from Randolph Road experience fairly lengthy delays. Uh, from a traffic engineer's point of view, the operation of the intersection currently during peak hours is something what we call level of service F. 
meaning that the delay associated with vehicles attempting to enter Route 547 from Randolph Road does so at long delays, and it's, uh, it's essentially what traffic engineers would consider to be an unacceptable situation. We did a full day worth of traffic counts. We looked at the traffic counts that were utilizing the intersection, and we compared them to the warrants that are set forth in the Federal Highway Administration's Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. And what we found was that current traffic volumes using the intersection today are high enough to warrant installation of a traffic signal. When we met with the county and we uh, informed them of this in information, the county engineering department, we were told that there were no plans to install a traffic signal at this location. There was no funding for this available. And so we went back to the drawing board and my client has stepped up to the plate and offered to make the improvements to the intersection, which as Mr. Ward indicated, will not only include separate left and right turn lanes on the Randolph Road approach to Route 547, but a separate southbound left turn lane on Route 547 and a northbound right turn lane. With these improvements in place, with the traffic signal and the widening of the intersection in place, the overall level of service for the intersection will go from a current level of F, which is unacceptable, to a B level of service, and that would include our traffic. And so at the end of the day, what's being proposed here from a traffic point of view is a benefit not only to, to the applicant, but to the general public utilizing the intersection, which now currently experiences significant delays. There are also uh, accidents at the intersection because of the lack of a traffic signal. We're going to take care of that situation. We're going to improve the intersection. Uh, the county will be involved in the review of the plans for the signal and the widening. And ultimately, at the end of the day, even when our traffic is util utilizing the intersection because of the improvements, you're going to have a safer and more efficient intersection. Very simple. Thanks, John. Just to pose the, uh, the dialogue about traffic, many are concerned with the truck routes and what roads will the trucks come and go on. Um, I want to touch upon state regulations. State regulations require all trucks um, serving the transfer station must follow predetermined and pre-approved truck routes. And these are predetermined and pre-approved with the township and with the state. Deviation from these routes results in fines levied by the state. We intend to locate these truck routes on the main roads as much as feasible for incoming and outgoing trips. To, to wrap things up on my end, I just want to touch upon the benefits to Howell. Resource recycling is creating 40 plus new high quality full time jobs. Resource will need to employ sorters, heavy machine operators, bookkeepers, administrators, and more. Operations will take place inside a brand new building, reducing noise and dust. A new traffic light with dedicated turn lanes will be installed at the 547 Randolph intersection, making a highly dangerous intersection safer for motorists and our neighbors. Resource will only accept construction and demolition debris. No household waste, no trash, not now, not in the future. A large portion of the sorted material will be clean wood, and we will process this material into mulch on site. The goal is to recycle up to 70% of the incoming material, material that would normally wind up in New Jersey landfills. And with that, thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. At this time, as I indicated in the initial memorandum, um, if the public has any questions regarding the presentation that was just uh, given, um, please, actually we'll do it by uh, raise your hand at this point. Thank you. And just please step up to the podium and just state your name. Sure. My name is Gordon Gemma. I'm standing in for Mr. Ron Gazarowski. I represent Mr. Chaim Brecker, who is a property owner at 475 Alexander Avenue, which is approximately half a mile away from the subject property. I've got a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm never accused of being soft-spoken. But I have got a few questions in direct connection with the statements that were given today by Mr. Ward and Mr. Ray. Um, and what I'd like to do, if I could, just be given the opportunity uh, from Mr. Um, for Mr. Ward, um, just. 
by your letter of February 27, 2017 to Stuart Norman, you responded to concerns submitted by CME, which were dated 11-28-16, and James Herman, dated 2-10-17. Is this the latest response from Inside Engineering to the concerns raised by the township? Well, th this isn't, that's not related well, to uh, what was printed. Actually, it is, because Mr. Ward went through a number of times making the statement, and I quote, that they had addressed the concerns of the township professionals. And I'd like to explore those comments that he made today on the record uh, so that we can understand how he addressed the concerns. And right now, on my understanding, the, he addressed the concerns. The last written report to the concerns of the township were, that I understand were February 27, 2017. The question I'm asking, is there anything else in writing other than the latest of 2000, February 27, 2017? I, and just to clarify, I think there's a misconception again as to what we're doing tonight. This is not an opportunity to try to um, dig into the presentation or the application to try to prove something wrong. The purpose of the presentation was to give the public a general idea of what was before pending freeholder approval on the application. I understand that, Mr. Beckman, but if a statement is made by the applicant, I have, the, I believe, under your process, the ability to question the validity of the statement that was made tonight in front of this board, in front of this public. And if I can't, then that's fine, but I'd like the ability to question the statements that were made by the public. Just basically what he presented tonight, though, not going back into previous letters well, submitted and things like that. Uh, well, the point is this. If he said that they addressed all the statements and the concerns of the board of the of Township of Howell's professionals, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree, all I am saying is what I saw last, based upon an Oprah request, is a letter dated February 27, 2017. Is that the basis by which he made a statement tonight? Are you able to answer that at this point in time? I, he didn't bring no. his entire file with him. Well, fortunately, and I got I a think, copy of it. I, I think this is in the nature of cross-examination. It is. All right. We're going to move on. Do you have any other questions? Uh, I, do. I do. I have a few other questions. And just to be clear, uh, that other than the schematic plans as provided tonight, have there been any other engineered site plans produced or provided? I can answer that. No. That'll be a state level requirement, not a county level. All right. There was a question you brought up about specifically suited, a specific suitability of this site. I didn't say that. We, there was a question you brought up about, I think you said, the, why this site is appropriate. So I want to make sure I got the right language. And Mr. Jam, I did not say that. Well, then I can go back through the presentation that you said why this site was appropriate. And I want to discuss that, if that's okay with you. You brought up about suitability of this site because of its proximity to transportation. Is that a fair representation of the statement you made tonight? Uh, to clarify, we're, we're close to major roads. Is that the only basis by which you find the site to be suited? That's not what I presented upon. Then please tell me what the other basis is for why this site is specifically suited. Again, we're not expanding okay. on okay. things on that, on that nature. It's not going to do you any type of cross-examination. And again, to the public, this is not an opportunity to cross-examine the presentation. This is not because because this board has already taken action on this application. It is, you can have a say. We're going to give the public the opportunity to make their statements. And please, do not, please, or else I'll ask you to leave. Well, let this, me... Excuse me? As I had indicated in my initial memorandum that I read to start this meeting, this, uh, this, uh, this came to a vote in May of 2017. It was recommended to move on to the freeholders so they can review the application to determine whether it's going to be approved or not. This board this evening is not taking any action, is not taking any vote, is not moving on in any degree in that matter. It's listening to the public to create a full public record on the matter, and then it's going to, that public record is going to be transferred over to the freeholders for their review. The freeholders will review it at the February 22nd meeting to determine whether this application is going to be granted or not. That is what needs to be understood this evening. I understand. So just so we're clear, regardless of what's happening tonight, regardless of the comments made, this board will take another action? Correct. So this board has already voted a sense? Correct. 
And so this is simply a public hearing so that the freeholders can have a complete record. That is correct. Okay. So it would be inappropriate on in in front of this board to cross-examine any any witnesses so we could have that complete record. That is correct. I just want to make sure you said that. That is correct because you're going to have that opportunity at the open public hearing. So at the open public Just to be clear, at the open public hearing, we'll have the opportunity. I'm not I I do not I'm not making that statement because I'm not sure. But well, well, there was <laughs> there was the opportunity at our open public hearing in May to come and cross-examine the witnesses as much as anybody had wanted to. Can I, can I go to that? Because the, the notice that I have was a notice dated July, for July 27th, 2017 meeting. Just to be clear, what notice was given to the public for the May meeting? Stuart, do we have the uh, notice on hand? And we can supply that after the fact, but we're, again, we're not, we're not delving into this. And what I'm probably going to do now, I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off because this is just going into too many things that I've already explained we're not getting into tonight. Ben, just for the record. I'd like the opportunity to supplement the record as to questions that will supplement asking of your engineer, of your traffic expert, such that we have the opportunity, or at least the public has the opportunity, to question them, if not in February, but at some point where we have the right and the opportunity to ask questions about what they presented this evening in terms of what they said are the facts, which was the basis upon your making a vote. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Paul Schneider. I'm an attorney with Giordano Howard and Cecily here tonight on behalf of uh, Arnold Steele, which owns 79 Randolph Road. I'm sorry, my name's Paul Schneider. I'm an attorney with Giordano Howard and Cisla in Red Bank. I'm here on behalf of Arnold Steele, which uh, owns uh, um, 79 Randolph Road, as well as the owners of 59 and 89 Randolph Road, which are most of the, the property other than the applicant's property along that stretch of Randolph Road. I first want to ask a question to you, Mr. Beekman, because I have a, here a letter of August 7th um, from the uh, clerk of the Board of Freeholders, August 7, 2017, that says that the county is sending this back to the Solid Waste Advisory Committee for reconsideration. And I think I heard you say that they're not reconsidering anything. That's correct. So you're disregarding the direction from the Board of Freeholders. No, Is we that were correct? we were given our orders, and we're here tonight abiding to those orders. B were the orders not to reconsider the application? They were not. So what was the purpose of this uh, letter that uh, the clerk of the board sent? It's of no no import. Basically, our orders are to allow the public to make comments and make that as part of the record so the fear holders can review it. I'm not going to say it again. I'm just not. Okay, I have a, qu a couple questions. Uh, I guess it would be for, for Mr. Ray. A couple questions. I guess it would be for Mr. Ray with regard to uh, uh, the traffic improvements that are being proposed. Um, one is did I understand that the improvements will also include creating the approach lanes on Randolph Road? The second is, what's the timing for completion of the improvements vis-a-vis -vis the opening of the facility? Um, and the third is whether there'll be any type of bonding. And the answers are yes, I don't know, and I don't know. So, the, yes, it will include the approach lanes. Correct. You don't know whether or not the improvements will be completed before the facility opens, and you don't know whether there will be any bonding required to assure that the improvements will be made. That's usually not what a traffic engineer does, so I don't know the answer to those questions. Does anyone else know the answer for, on behalf of the applicant? Yes, I know the answer. The improvements will be done prior to opening the facility, and it will be bonded, and there will be a developer's agreement between the applicant and the county. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. If you can just state your name, please. 
Good evening. Uh, William Alley, 730 Oakland Road, right. Howell, New Jersey. Um, I have several questions, um, I guess, for Mr. Ward. Uh, the first is that the uh, processing of gypsum on site. Uh, I wish to know what your uh, client is going to do about the toxic waste and the Chinese sheetrock that's been coming into the country over the last several years. Um, that would be question one. The, the gypsum will be sorted like every other material, will be loaded individually, all gypsum on a truck, and transported to an ultimate disposal site. Uh, it will not be, there will be nothing else that occurs on site in regards to the gypsum. Will there be testing of the gypsum on site to uh, identify which one is the toxic sheetrock in essence and which is not? That, that's a good question. I, my understanding is that the ultimate disposal site will be responsible for that. So that's not your facility? That's correct. So you will be processing the toxic sheetrock at your facility? I didn't say that. But that is the net result? No, sir. I think so. I'm in construction, so I understand where it goes. Okay. Uh, my second question is uh, the traffic study. Um, I live on Oakland Road. Uh, my property is adjacent to Arnold Steel on the back side. And um, as many residents behind me do know, uh, with all the road work that's been going on on um, 547 at present, some of the trucks now are diverting, and I, I totally disagree with the map that was up there about the, the routes the trucks take. Uh, <laughs> it's, that's insane and insufficient. Uh, we see tractor trailers uh, today. Please, can we just bring the applause so they can continue the questions, please? Uh, we see these uh, tractor trailers. Um, dump trucks, garbage trucks, um, whichever other type of truck you wish to say. What in your plan is to stop these vehicles coming out of your facility and into your facility should there be some kind of stoppage in the road of 547 or for that matter Miller, Lanes Pond, um, Brook Road, um, the list can go on and on and on, and I never saw any of those roads dealt with at all. As I stated in the presentation, that there will be predetermined. Sorry, I'm sorry. sorry, that was for the traffic. Okay, Matt, either one of us. There, yeah. there is going to be a state-regulated traffic um, the rats. Uh, direction. You know that the trucks will be able to take, and as Mr. Ward indicated during his uh, presentation, if the trucks don't follow that mandated truck route, fines can be levied. We have no intention of sending trucks up and down Oak Glen Road or Brook Road or any of those roads you mentioned. And just to add on to that, sir. I'm sorry. Um, the question was, what is your alternate plan? You, you have no alternate plan for the traffic. I think he just answered. That's up yeah. to the Howell Township Police. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I also have um, issues with the statement that there are no waterways adjacent to the property. Um, I live there. Is there this, are. Excuse me. Is this more of a question or? Uh, it will be a question. I'm, I'm uh, laying the groundwork for the question. The streams that are there, that are not adjacent to the property, but just outside that legal boundary, what are you going to do to protect them from the runoff from your property? Sure, so there's a, there's a couple of things with that, and I know the streams you're talking of. One, stormwater management will be handled wholly on site, which means no runoff will leave the property, okay? The other facet of that is when we submit to the DEP, the DEP will be reviewing in many ways. Different depart divisions of the DEP will be reviewing the application. One of those divisions is the land use division, which regulates all environmentally sensitive areas, including Howell Township streams. Um, my experience in Howell Township, and I, I know where your property is, sir, there's uh, Dix Brook is back there. That is a Category 1 water. That has very strenuous environmental protections regulated by the state on it. We will not impact those. Any of our 
proposed development will be subject to the land use review by the state of New Jersey. It must comply with those rules, mm -hmm. just like any other major development. So no runoff off-site coupled with the land use regulations of the state meet being fully adhered to, in my opinion, would protect the streams. Could you give me an idea of what kind of barrier or um, stoppage you will be installing on site? To, to prevent the runoff from going anywhere? Right now, the site itself, generally across the 10 acres, is flat. Um, it is not, there is no discharge point today. So with that, we can't create a new discharge point in the proposed condition. So there is no reason to put any stoppage or berms to prevent runoff from going off site. It'll be wholly contained on site, whether above ground or subsurface infiltration. Okay, that concludes what I have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. No, take your time, please. My name is Paula Brado. I live at Winding Brook. Good evening. <clears throat> Trailer Park. I'm asking if you've directed yourself to the Monmouth County Health Department facilities. Judging by the people that um, are here tonight, you do not have the facilities or the budget to maintain the environmental services laid out by the Monmouth County Health Department. <clears throat> we will lose. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm yes. sorry. Uh, is there a question you're going to pose? Or? Yes. There is. OK. <clears throat> What's going to happen to the um, fumes from the diesels and school buses? There'll be no school attendance. <clears throat> There'll be no traffic availability to the employees of the realtors, of the um, Walmart and other facilities. Judging by the size of this crowd, you will not be able to answer all the complaints that will be coming in from <laughs> residents about the noise pollution, the air pollution, and other pollution from this site. This site is under size for your um, expectations. And ma'am, I'm sorry, again, it sounds more like this is a statement as opposed to a question. My question is, okay. why are you forcing this on our community when it is not suitable for the residents or the, <clears throat> the retailers, or the schools, or any other just, people that have jobs, the with your 40 jobs that you're expecting to start are not equal to the school teachers and re <clears throat> real estate people that are not going to have access to their own jobs. Has anybody explored the, the nepotism of this construction. All right, lady. Excuse me? Um, I'm not really sure where the question was there, but the question is, it's just remember, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, it's more so are that... Are the freeholders aware that their clerk was the mother of the son who owned that property originally? Um, that's something also for the freeholders to answer, ma'am? Well... Are you going to bring it up? I think you just did. This is this everything that's on the record tonight is actually going to be submitted to the freeholders. And what I'm saying is, you're not going to be able to handle the complaints of the citizens of Howell Township. Yeah, we can see they're going to be a lot. You don't have the staff or the budget in order to answer all those questions. You don't have the police in order there to. Um, do you have police? <clears throat> Excuse me. I nope, have take struggle. your time. Take your time. Do you have the police? 
with stopwatches and summons books to issue to the summons all the trucks and school buses that are going to be idling for over three months, minutes, in these areas? Do you have that kind and of a budget? Again, if you're looking at the board to answer it, or the council answer anything, it's really not going to be something that they're going to be doing this evening? And this is what I'm saying. You cannot answer the complaints of all the people and adhere to the Monmouth County Health Department regulations that you are set. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, okay. okay, sorry. Claudia Malik, 91 Vienna Road. Claudia Malik, M A L I K, 91 Vienna Road. Uh, my question is for you. Um, what day of the week did you take this traffic survey and what time? Uh, the counts were conducted from 7 in the morning till 7 in the evening on April 5th, 2017. Is that a Saturday? No. Okay. It was a weekday. Uh, it was during a week. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's just see. I just had pointed at somebody else. But, oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even notice that. There is a line on the. Uh, Leon Flaster. I represent uh, 79 Randolph Road, 59 Randolph Road, 89 Randolph Road. Uh, block 38, Lot 1, Randolph Road, Block 5, Lot 2 and 3, Randolph Road, primarily most of Randolph Road. Uh, a, a statement was made tonight. I wrote it down. I was uh, actually laughing when it was made. It said that the improvements, I want to make sure this is the correct statement, that the improvements that were going to be made, which are basically a traffic light at the corner of 547 and Randolph Road, and a widening of uh, the section of Randolph Road uh, in front of the proposed transfer station, is going to reduce the traffic that already exists? Was that the statement that was made? Yeah. Okay. So my question is, is uh, no one brought up tonight in your presentation, how many trucks do you think are going to be coming into this facility a day, being a 1,500-ton facility? I, I have the, the smaller trucks, which will be the inbound trucks, uh, about 187, 188 trucks per day. And, and the larger trucks, the outbound trucks, uh, 62 per day. That's over a 10-hour period. And that's going to reduce the traffic? That's I didn't say it was going to reduce the traffic. Okay. According to something that I read in one of the proposals, it said that a 1,500-ton transfer station will be able to generate about 375 trips a day, which equals 2,063 a week, 42 trucks an hour for just incomings. The, the numbers have been refined based on app, uh, information the applicant has provided to me. And uh, based on based on what information based that the applicant? New information that I've received from the applicant with respect to the, the operation of the facility. Okay, so if Randolph Road in 547 was not capable of, of withstanding the traffic that it had normally, uh, I don't know how you think that another 150 trucks coming in a day and then uh, I presume at least 70 or 80 trucks leaving a day, or in my calculations, 375 trucks, that's not going to make the whole area worse for traffic concerns? Quite frankly, this is what traffic engineers do. In my opinion, the installation of the traffic signal and the turning lanes at Randolph Road and Route 547 are long overdue. They're warranted today. And yes, the situation with those improvements in place will be better. Absolutely. And you're there one day, right? What, no, were you there one day? I'm just let me I answer. I did the traffic yes, count on one day, which was a representative day. I've been through that intersection many times. I used to live in Howell Township. I still go through the intersection quite a few times during the week on my daily travels. So I know the area. Okay. Well, we're there 365 days a year, okay? And we do trucking ourselves. And we know that as just, it is. Please make sure it's a comment, too, a uh, question. Of course. Uh, so I don't know how you can say that doing it's, a one-day study will allow you to make the assumption that this it's still being argumentative. Is, a, is, is appropriate for this proposed site. Thank you. Thank you. The day that I did the traffic counts was Sorry. totally appropriate.
Good evening. My name is Catherine Moore. I live at 757 Oakland Road. I am the third house from Randolph Road on the right. The question that I have is, is the township going to be financially compensated by government subsidies? And if so, by how much? To have this transfer station. I don't know. Is there, does that represent anything? I mean, because the, personal? It, it's not a government subsidy. It would be the the host community fee that the resource engineering or recycling has to offer to the township. It's not that's not a government subsidy at all. That's a host community fee mandated by the state of New Jersey. Private funds. Well on Tuesday, one of the members of the council And just remember it's a question please. I know. Okay. I had asked this question to her and she said, you know what, let me find out. And she ran back in, she came out and she said to me Yes, we will be receiving 50 cents a ton. That's what she told me. That doesn't make sense to me. That's, that's how the state law reads. Really? Yes, so the town is going to get some sort of subsidy by having this transfer station. I would say it's not a subsidy. It's a fee that they have to collect from the facility. It's not a subsidy. In the so they will earn money from this facility. Oh, They're the making township. money. They're the going to make money. The township is a, can collect a minimum amount from each ton process, yes. Yes, okay. So now, to the gentleman that was the engineer for R&R, &R, in his presentation, there was a, he said that our property taxes would be greatly reduced. Correct? <laughs> Correct? No. Yes. I did see that. Are you asking the question to the, uh, I, I'm not really answering any questions. I'm actually just acting as the mediator between the. So. Ma'am, I said a le less tax burden. Absolutely it will be because the neighbors that live around there, we will appeal our taxes because okay. we will lose 25% of our Ma property values because of this transfer station. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, so everybody knows I'm going to have to start cutting people off if we're going to be making comments as opposed to questions. The uh, comment period will be after the question period. You'll be able to come up here and make comments. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brandon Rio. I live on number three, Brook Road. I'm in full frontal at the end of this whole nightmare, okay? Um, and I see what happens every day. I've seen the trucks. I've seen the stuff that comes in and out of this dirt operation that French has, okay? And I have a good question for you. How many trucks a day are you running in and out of that facility now? Whoever's, can, whoever's qualified to answer that. You're the traffic guy. You must know, right? No, I, I don't have the answer to what's going on today. I know they are operating today. Okay. And some of that traffic's going through the intersection, but uh, I don't have the answer to that. You don't have the answer. But you've also said that we're going to see an improvement in the traffic flow when you add, I just did some Chinese arithmetic here, 1,250 trucks a week. And you're going to tell me that somehow, what, would you turn off the mic? What, okay. <laughs> that somehow this is going to be improvement? That, 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 our, that our, our roads will be less burdened. I, I didn't say that. I said the intersection of Route 547 and Randolph Road will operate more safely and more efficiently than it does today with the improvements. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Now, do you drive up and down Squonkum Road? Remember, quite, too, we're, we're not necessarily... Bit, 547? I certainly do. Okay. So do you think that another 1,250 trucks would be good for the community? I think they belong on the county road. Okay. All right. Now, here. I think this gentleman, this guy over here, I don't remember his name or anything, but you said something like you had a little graph up here, and you were showing the designated routes that you would take and that you would impose some kind of state regulation that they would have to follow that route. Is, am I right or wrong? The, I didn't have a map of any routes. But well, there was a map up there. There was a map. Can right, you put right. it back? Sir, sir it, was, it was for representative existing routes to other facilities. No, yes, there will be designated routes. Designated routes. There will, yes. What, what are the designated routes? Not determined yet, determined by the state when the state application goes in, approved by the township of Howell. 
So that we're not there. Uh, so, so, you, so that, 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 just, that, so that, that map you put up there showing 195, four, uh, 547 in Route 9 really didn't mean anything, did it? It's not. It doesn't apply to the predetermined routes. Okay. So 1,250 more trucks are going to be coming up and down our local streets. All right, Serge, I'm just... Uh, I'm, I'm, okay, that's, I'm, just coming up, I'm surmising all this, okay? And I'm going to ask you one more question. How is it possible... That you think any one of anybody in this room thinks that our community, the residents that live here, and you put up that big beautiful sign up there showing all the all the businesses and all the industrial. You got an electric transfer station. You got a dump. You got this uh, the, the Arnold Steel. But there's real people living here too. What are you going to tell us? That's going to that's going to give us some kind of relief as to how on earth you're going to. You're going to channel 1,250 trucks in and out of here. There is no good route to Route 9. You're going to go up Alexander Avenue? You're going to go, how are you going to get over to the parkway? This is still You're going to go down uh, Brook Road? Sir, this is still not a question, though, being posed. And, 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 all right. We're, we're going to cut it down soon if this is going to continue in here. Because we're not, we're not here. We're not here. We're if, you, if, you, if you came here to ask the opinions of the people that are in here, these old people are stressed out by this. We don't want it. And that's perfectly fine. We're making a record for the freeholders. But you can also submit any concerns or questions I'm written. I, this, is, this meeting is here so that I can come up and speak my, my opinion. And the council is allowing that to happen at this point in time. Okay. So maybe you guys can give us some satisfactory answers. We're not answering anything tonight. We're asking. You, you came up here. You told me to come up and ask questions. I'm looking for answers. And you, and you did ask a number of questions. I haven't gotten any answers. Right, what I, are you going to tell me? All right, that's going to make it. I don't think you like the, the answer. You you answer. All right, sir. Sir, I think we've had enough. We're going to move on enough. to the next person. Thank you. Okay. Now, listen. Um, this was for questions. There's also speeches. You have people. Here are. Okay. Right. So I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. How many more uh, individuals are looking to question at this point? Just a show of hands. Everybody raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. Well, that's, obvious, that's obviously not going to work. So if we, if we have to. Let's send the questions and comments. They, well, they, we, we've addressed just about everything on the CME link. So you want to? All right. And let, and let's open up for public comments. We have, th two, we have three more right here. Yeah. We're going to allow three more, and then we're going to move on to public co to, uh, comments. Please just state your name. Carl Gegenbach, two station place, six station place. Uh, is the intent of the opinions of the professionals up here right now for the benefit? Is the intent of the opinions of the professionals up here tonight strictly for the benefit of the applicant? It's for informational purposes, not for the benefit of the applicant at this point. But these professionals work for the applicant. They do. Okay, so their opinions are going to be skewed in his favor. But the, there's no voting on the. Uh, uh, there's no voting going on tonight. So any opinions given by them? Excuse me. Getting close to cutting this meeting down. I'm telling you that much right now. Now, basically, they're only giving a presentation. This is not going before the freeholders for them to review whatever presentation. They're doing this as a favor to try to bring everybody into the light at, with regards to their application. That's the only purpose of them coming up here this evening. Understood, but it's also part of public record, so it will be part of the, the information pre presented to the freeholders to some degree. It'll Whether they do it themselves individually in front of them, this is the information they're going to present to the freeholders to try and get this approved. And this is more or less though also a um, second time that's all been presented. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you pull up the zoning map? Again, that was presented? I, I don't have the... Uh, and whoever has that slide of that zoning map... We don't, we don't have a zoning map in the file. Whatever map you had that showed the adjacent properties and the street names and things like that, the slide that was up previously, can that be brought back up? Tax map, zoning map, whatever map you wish to call it. This isn't going to be a question because I have to point something out. Bottom left corner, station place, directly across the street from the property. 
Those are where my two houses are located. Station Place doesn't exist anymore. The town eliminated it. My driveway literally pulls in and out of Squonkum Road 547. I have to deal with that hazard on a daily basis. You're going to throw all these trucks on? Do I have to now deal with all these trucks and trying to manipulate that traffic too? I'm on a well system. Does an aquifer run under this property that's going to get contaminated? Right now, they're doing biodegradable natural recycling. They're going to bring in construction debris, toxic. Is it possible that toxic waste is going to get into my drinking water? And these are more so comments that you're looking to make. Is it to have possible that the toxic waste is going to get into my drinking water? I, I, nobody here is going to be able to answer something along those lines. And okay. if you're looking to leave that comment on the record for review, then that's fine. Common sense. Okay, fine. I'll move on. How many trucks can fit in the facility at one time? Uh, to queue up 26 to the scale house and then an additional six up to the building, and there's six doors for tipping. So that'll be 38. So the assumption is there will be trucks outside the facility waiting to get into process waste. That's, I, I didn't say that. Is the anticipate okay. So the anticipation there will be trucks. These trucks will be idling. These trucks will be leaking. When rain happens and fills in these dump trucks, as they travel, all this toxicity is traveling with them. I have a well system. This is going to get into my well system. This is going to contaminate the ground in the area. They're going from a natural biodegradable waste to a construction waste. That's not acceptable for this area. This is residential. This is an industrial. Thank you. This is the, this is, I'm sorry. It looked like more people got up. As I indicated, there's only going to be two more after this individual. So. Swerkin? Okay. Jeff Casaletto from Norris McLaughlin and Marcus on behalf of Mazer Recycling Services, 3230 Shafto Road, Tinton Falls. Uh, I might have missed an answer about normal hours. My first question has to do with what was meant by normal hours. If, if you could clarify uh, that statement in the presentation. Sure. Monday through Friday, 7 to 5, Saturday, 7 to noon. Um, do those, those are the operational hours beginning to end, no operations after those times or before those times? Yes. Um, my understanding was in the application there was mention, or at least in responses to questions that you guys got during the application process, um, you had stated that you would be clearing the floor at the end of each day, each operational day, I assume that was, right? So then if 5 o'clock is the outside time, it's clear by 5. That's a, that's a state um, waste management regulation. Okay. So the, the state would enforce it and, you know, the county's already, you know. Just to understand, so the, the, there's no truck in or out after 5 o'clock then? It, it, they will not accept anything after 5. Uh, the next question has to do with uh, traffic engineering comment. Um, there was mention of the current level of service nearby and at the end of installing a traffic light and I'm not sure what the other improvements were and that's really what my question is to get to a level of service B what entails getting to a level of service B from where it is now installation of a traffic light widening of Randolph Road to provide separate left and right turn lanes at the intersection and a widening on County Route 547 to provide for a southbound left turn lane and a northbound right turn lane now, is that something that the applicant is going to do before the operation starts, all, all of that? I That's think that question was asked and answered before, but I'm, I'm not certain. Is that right, Rich? The answer is yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, next question has to do with mention of the waste that was going into the facility and coming out of the facility. It was uh, identified as 13C waste, I believe, in the presentation. Is that the only waste going in and out of the facility? That is the only waste. Uh, the application mentioned something about 13. Is that also going in and out, or is that removed from, from the application? You are correct. The initial application also requested type 13. That's been removed from the application. Uh, you listed uh, material that you'd be pulling from the waste stream and storing somewhere on site, either at the Class B or elsewhere. 
Uh, in the application, it mentioned lead as one of those items, but I didn't see it in the presentation tonight. Is, is lead one of the items that would be removed from the waste stream and stored somewhere on site? Not stored on site. That's one of the materials that cannot be recycled on site. It needs to be transported to an ultimate disposal area. The, the Class B materials that can remain and be recycled on site are clean wood parts and concrete. Uh, Mr. Beekman, my, my next question has to do with the memo that you had read earlier. And if, if you allow me some leeway, I just wanted to add a couple things. It, it was a good memo that summarized the history of how this thing got started and where we are today. Um, but there were a couple things that I thought I saw after doing an Open Public Records Act that I didn't quite hear in your memo. And if you just give me a moment, I'd, I'd like to have a conversation with you or ask you whether or not this is part of your memo or if something has changed. We can probably do that after the fact if you don't mind. Okay. Thank I'll you. Do it as part of the comments. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is this is the last question that we're going to be at, uh, asked. I said that there was going to be two more after the one individual. Uh, hi, my name is Theodore Van Ness. I live at 1112 Lakewood Farmingdale Road. It, it used to be the pride, the property of Northeast Remco, which was a big problem for this township. Okay. I purchased a pri property, so Mike, a couple of questions I do have, okay. If there was studies done on that particular intersection, was there studies done on other intersections, such as Miller Road, Oak Glen, and things of that nature? Because I believe that with the increased traffic flow, you're going to be, uh, be interfering with other intersections as well that are very close in that vicinity. The answer is the truck routes are intended to utilize County Route 547 up towards uh, Interstate 195 and, and generally have everything go through that intersection, not use the local roads. As was indicated before, when the truck routes are set for this facility, uh, Howell Township will have a big say in which roads can and can't be used, and it is my expectation that they will not allow us to use those roads. I understand that, but what I was asking was did you study what the impact would be no. on the other intersections within no, that road? Not, no, because we're not intending to use those okay. roads. Oh, I, I know you're not intending to use that road, but what I'm saying is that if the increased traffic... you would like to hire me to do a traffic study <coughs> on your road, I'll do it. No, no I, just, I just thought that was just, let's not go back and forth for there. the residents to have a study done on other intersections that may be affected. That's all. Well, okay, then my next question. Not, they're not going to be affected, so therefore... Okay, my next question would, would, would be, and I don't know if it could be answered at this forum, but I still want to state the question. Will there be signs like weight limit signs and things of that nature that are not truck routes in the local area so not to affect, affect the, you know, the local residents? That's all. Next question will also be that uh, now my property, if I'm not mistaken, used to be zoned as commercial because there's a building there that was once a welding shop. Now it is zoned residential. Now I bought a prior, you know, so, so I just didn't understand if the town can change zoning that quickly. If I'm in a residential area, how will I be affected if I'm that close to this recycling center? And I also have a well. And um, I believe that's it for my questions, and I want to thank you for the opportunity for me to speak and voice a few of my concerns. All right, thank you. We're going to move on to the public comment section now. Oh, so I'm short. I wasn't seeing, so I'm going to be discriminated against because I was standing there when you said those in line at the last one. No, ma'am. We just had indicated that um, there was going to be two more people after the one individual was there because the questions are kind of overlapping at this I'll point in time. To the Okay, we're, we're going to move forward. I do have your list here. Whoever signed up on it, I'm starting with the first page. I'll call your name out. I'll try to get everybody correct. You may come up to the podium, and we're done with the questions and answers. You still can ask questions and answers, but you also can make your statements now. So you're more than welcome. Let's start with the first one. And again, I'm just going to be um, keeping track of the time on the side. I'll give you a, a notice when there's about 30 seconds left. I'll just raise my right hand and um, just try to wrap things up at that point in time. Again, if someone feels like they uh, need to get anything additional, they can submit written submissions uh, to the freeholders for their review during this application as well. So in the event you feel like you didn't get everything out at this point in time, don't think that you are cut off and can't submit something for their review before the application is approved or denied. Do you want to just talk? Do you want to put that in there, Rick? 
You can address them to me if anybody wants to write this down real quick. I don't have it on PowerPoint. I have business cards here after if anybody wants to. Open up Microsoft Word and transcribe it. Wait one sec, I'll do this for you. Everybody ready? Stuart Newman. Could you please state your name? I just your did. Profession? Sure. Stuart Newman. S T U A R T. Last name Newman. N E W M A N. I'm the solid waste coordinator for Monmouth County. Address is 6000 Asbury Avenue in Titten Falls, New Jersey. 07753. Phone number, area code 732. 683-8686, and I am at extension 8961. My email address is S-N-E-W-M-A-N, -E I'm sorry, Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T dot Newman, N-E-W-M-A-N, at C-O dot Mammoth, M-O-N-M-O-U-T-H dot N-J dot U-S. Everything that you submit uh, to Mr. Newman with the address he just gave you is, is going to be dispersed individually to the freeholders for their review prior to the meeting. Because this is part of the process that's been set in place with regards to this. So if you want to write to them directly, you can feel free. If this is going to go to them, if you want to contact the freeholders directly, then that's up to you. But uh, we're giving you an avenue to submit written submissions to them. Okay, we are ready for your comments. Uh, Jeff Casalato. Uh, thank you. I, I'm first on the list because that I'm a victim of getting here early. I, I'd like to yield my time to any council member or council person or spokesperson that might be here without losing my two minutes, if I may. And you can call whoever that is that happens to be in attendance. All right, that's, that's fine. Thank you. you want to, you want to, go ahead. So just to the general public, um, if there's someone from the council, oh, sorry. Um, Hello? Is it working? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, I'm Alec Berger. I live at 222 Old Tavern Road. Oh. Uh, I'm Alec Berger. I live at 222 Old Tavern Road. And uh, my mom's the mayor. And she uh, can't be here tonight, but she gave me this to represent to you guys and uh, to the people here. Um, I'm writing to have my comments heard and become a part of the record at the public hearing taking place at the Howell Township Municipal Building to address the construction of new waste processing facility on Randolph Road, as I am unable to attend. I have asked that my comments be read by the meeting by me <laughs> um, on behalf uh, so that the position is clear. Uh, as I understand it, the purpose of the hearing is to listen to any comments or concerns that any residents might have regarded about the facility or how this proposed amendment to our master plan might affect them. As a resident of Howell Township and as the mayor of Howell, I am writing this today to voice my complete disapproval and proposed tr um, transfer and to make my stance known that I'm against having this solid waste transfer station facility in our town. And solid waste transfer station includes with a new facility that handles solid waste from Ocean County. Solid waste in this plan would consist of trucking in large quantities of debris from construction to be sorted and rest and recycled before being sent out out of state. To, wait, <laughs> sorry, to being sent to an out of state disposal facility to continue with the process. For this to occur, it would involve large numbers of waste-carrying vehicles idling and emitting carbon fumes and pollution, as well as large traffic issues outside of this new facility <laughs> that will be in the intersection of, of Route 4, 5, 547 and Randolph Road. 
The roads to and from the proposed site are narrow country roads, which do not allow for this type of activity. Even if widening the roads were possible, they're already a highly traveled and contribute to a source of traffic congestion during rush hours. These roads are not traveled by many school buses during the hours of operation. In addition, the lot size is too small to accommodate the number of trucks that would be necessary to, for this type of facility. I again want to firmly say that this is that this SWAC is not appropriate, nor do we need it in our community. I as well, I as well as the residents of Howell, fear the negative environmental impact it will have on our town, including pollution runoff from the construction debris resulting in damage to the area, wildlife, waterways, drinking wells, and local farms. It's not if, but when the underwater wells become contaminated, like what occurred in Jackson, that could result that could result in a catastrophic consequence. There is no mechanism to ensure that the materials brought into the site would be biodegradable or safe. The noise pollution generated from the facility and the traffic it will incur will greatly affect the quality of the life of the immediate local environment and will spread into the surrounding areas due to this facility built, being built in the area with so many acres of wetlands. The area pollutants that will ensue will have an immediate effect on the residents, causing many health issues for the Howell taxpayers. I, reviewed the I have reviewed the developer's agreement and understand that it calls for addressing traffic issues by including a traffic light at the involved intersection. This is, patch this is a patchwork approach that will have only a minor impact on the traffic congestion. I'm sorry. I, I, we're well over the time oh, at this yeah, point. I don't so. know. So, but okay, go ahead. Right. Sorry for me. No, no, slow. no, no. Right. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Um, it is a fear of the neighboring residents that the facility will cause property values to decrease. How residents will be forced to deal with the decreased quality of life due to the increased traffic, noise, air pollution, and the associated health issues that come with the increased air pollution. For the reasons I already stated, I strongly encourage the defeat of the waste transfer facility in Howell. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, Jeff Casaletto from Norris McLaughlin and Marcus on behalf of Mazza Recycling Services, 3230 Shafto Road, Tinton Falls. Um, I wanted to address generally uh, a concern about the notice that occurred for this particular meeting and basically the entire process that started a little over a year ago with respect to this application and how much information was out there to the general public to understand what's been going on from one moment to the next with, with respect to this application. And earlier I mentioned I wanted to address part of that memo that you were reading, Mr. Beekman, today. Uh, it skipped over a little bit of the history here. Um, after that freeholders meeting where we didn't have a formal hearing on this application, no comments were heard at that time, uh, it was kicked back to this council for reconsideration, I believe was the word that was used, uh, and no formal action was taken since then that I'm aware of. In particular, Mr. Newman wrote to the applicant in a September 11, 2017 letter stating that in order for SWAC to consider an application, there is a requirement for a formal expression of a position from the host community. As you recall, the host community gave initial support for this transfer facility as expressed in two letters from the town administrator. However, immediately prior to the public hearing before the Board of Freeholders, there was a change in position received from the town, followed later by another change in position from the mayor of the town. The SWAC requires the position of the host community in writing from the mayor and council regarding the proposed solid waste or recycling facility, which in this case is Howell Township. As we have discussed previously, it is solely the applicant's responsibility to garner municipal support for this project. Once this approval is received by your team in writing and is forwarded to me for review, I will then forward it on to the SWAC chairman for his review. Until said letter is received and properly reviewed, the application will not appear on any SWAC agenda. Yet here we are. After that letter, on January 10th, in a letter dated January 10th... Yeah, for two minutes. I'm sorry, re real quick. A letter came from Howell confirming that they were not in support of the application. Yet here we are 
at a SWAC meeting on the agenda when all the record says it was never going to reach SWAC until this happened. And there's nothing in the record that shows support. I'll end it there for my two minutes. Thank you. Are you a member of the council? Deputy Mayor, yes. Okay, thank you. Good evening, SWAC. Rob Nicastro, Deputy Mayor, for the record. Good evening, SWAC members. Today I speak to you in my elected official capacity. I first want to thank you for allowing us to host your meeting here in beautiful Howell and give us the opportunity to share with you this evening that the entire governing body vigorously oppose the proposed transfer station in Howell Township. <laughs> Understanding the Howell governing body and the municipality are not the approving authority of the proposed transfer station, we respectfully request that the Solid Waste Advisory Council members reject this application and recommend to the Monmouth County freeholders the proposed solid waste transfer facility located at 34 Randolph Road not be amended in the County Solid Waste Master Plan. The proposal that stands now before you, SWAC raises several specific issues that we believe will result in harmful consequences to our residents. On Tuesday night, many residents of our community appeared before the governing body and expressed legitimate concerns about the potentially negative and dangerous impact the proposal will have. Some concerns noted were impact on local traffic, odor nuisance, excessive noise, air pollution, dust, environmental impact, health hazards, proximity to local residents, vehicle access to the site, and traffic movement off-site. Negative impact to property values, rodents, and the fact that the location of the proposed facility is in close proximity to the Matinecock River, which flows into the Bonnicket Bay and is a primary source of our drinking water. We, the governing body of Howell Township, stand in firm unity with our residents and I will also note in a press release from our legislator leaders, Senator Robert Singer, Assemblyman Sean Keene, and Assemblyman Ned Thompson, that they also agree with the concerns our residents have raised and urge you to reject this application. I am sure you will hear from some of our residents' anxieties and fears that I didn't list tonight, and hopefully you will all agree they are serious and authentic. I want to emphasize we do not believe this is just a case of not in my backyard syndrome that many of us are aware of. I say this because many of the residents who spoke at our Tuesday meeting are longtime residents. These residents have seen their share problems in this section of town and know the lay of the land they call home. They have seen over many years some negative effects this facility has caused, including heavy dirt and debris being dragged from the site onto our local streets, brush fire, and illegally clearing within the buffers which have been documented by the township and I believe have been provided to this council. Our staff has remarked on other issues regarding the current facility, including the traffic impact on Randolph Road, which is designated a sub-collector road and is not meant for heavy traffic. The proposed site will pose significant disruptions to transportation patterns in the area. Specifically, the proposed location present a distinct lack of direct access to major thoroughfares. Therefore, the surrounding neighborhoods will be faced with an overwhelming increase in truck traffic, in some cases upwards of 250 trucks per day. As such, the public safety threat posed by the increased traffic congestion has not, to my knowledge, been sufficiently addressed by this applicant. Additionally, the trash transfer station located at the County Reclamation Center and Mazda Waste Station are currently not at capacity. Additionally, the Ocean County Northern Recycling Center is in close proximity to this section of Howell. Therefore, there is no public need for this facility in Howell. We strongly feel the public good will not be advanced by the location of this facility and will cause far more harm than good to our community. It is the responsibility of our county and state agencies to recognize the validity of residents' concerns and, and address them thoroughly and in a timely manner. The majority of residents have voiced their vehement op opposition to this project. For many reasons of the mentioned, we ask you to do the right thing, not recommend this facility be added to the solid waste plan, I thank you for your consideration and trust you will prudently manage the review of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay. Let me get out my paper. I'm not good at writing. Bob Walsh, I'm a councilman here and out. Um, you know, just let me tell you a little bit about, I feel we've been getting misinformation the whole time. I don't hold any of you responsible for that. 
You know, I didn't know that I was sitting back there that you voted on this in May. Nobody told us. Nobody sent us a memo. It never came to the governing body. I don't believe we were told there was a meeting that you were voting on it. We had no representatives there from what I just spoke to our head of community development. We had nobody from Howell Township there when you were voting on probably what is the most important thing that has happened, an application in Howell Township in the 13 years I've been on the governing body. That's pretty sad. I mean, I know me, I've already apologized to residents over the last five to six months. I've let the people down. I had a pretty tough year last year. I was sick. My son almost died, was in a coma. My mother had terminal cancer and did pass away Halloween. Okay, so I wasn't exactly on the ball 100%. But some of this that's going on here it just doesn't seem right. We've been told time and time again since Deputy Mayor told me about the Freeholder meeting two days before that this was going to be voted on by the Freeholder. I said, what are you talking about? And we went to the Freehold meeting and they stopped it that day. I mean, I knew nothing about it. And I'm not saying emails weren't sent to me, but there was no meeting of the governing body. There was no vote from the dais. There was no discussion of the governing body with the public in attendance. That's not the way the government runs here in hell. It's not how we do things. I mean, I don't know where the huge disconnect is. And I will take my responsibility for letting the people of Howe down. And I do not feel good about it. I've been losing sleep for months for different reasons, and this is one of them. But when I sit down and I listen to professionals say this is what's good for Howe Township, I see the people in the gym, in the movie theater, in the restaurant, in the food store, in the deli, at the gas station. There's not one person in Howe Township that think this is good for Howe Township. Not one. I mean, what is going on here? I really wonder, but I've been told by different elected officials, supposedly higher up, and different professionals, that how has no say in what happens here. This is America. We have a say in what goes on in our community. I mean, help us. I mean, help us. They, believe me, I've been told in the last week that Jews will be voting on this by officials and by professionals. Shouldn't I be given the correct information so I can relay it to the people of how? I mean, and now you tell me that's not true. We voted on this back in May. I have about 150 pages of documents about this. I've been researching for the last couple of days. And not in one of them do I see a letter saying that there was a, a meeting you all were holding and voting on this. I mean, that just doesn't seem right on something this important. If it was in your neighborhood, your neighborhood, your neighborhood, I think this would be pretty important to you and your neighbors. Well, it's pretty important to me and mine, too. Um, you know, I don't know what to do here. You, you know, I think there's a lot of blame to go around, but this is not anything in any way, shape, or form that is good for the people of Howe Township. You know, 250 truckloads a day is 500 trips. 250 one way and 250 the other way. It's not 250 trips. It's 500. Because you've got to go back and forth, don't you? I mean, that's simple math, people. 250 equals 5. Right down the street from this, on that major road you're talking about, 547, we have 800 to 1,000 young kids, some of them young drivers, playing in those soccer fields, those softball fields, and those lacrosse fields from this early spring until late fall. And there'll be all that extra truck traffic that you say is going to be directed on that road that we all know will go on a lot of other roads also. Okay? Please, tell us what we need to do to reopen this back up and to work on this going forward. Because the people of Hell have already committed to the governing body, and the governing body has committed to them that we're going to do everything we possibly can. So you're public servants, and you serve the residents of Monmouth County and the people of Howe. Could you tell me what we can do to help our residents? I need some truth, because I'm still not being told the truth to this day. And I would think, being up here all these years, I should be. And no, I don't blame... 
you all. And I don't blame the freeholders from that letter they received saying the governing body's in an agreement with them. You know what? I was never in agreement with anything. You don't see my name attached to anything that was an agreement of this project. When it was talked to me about a year and a half, two years ago, I used locker room talk, and I'm very good at it, that I was adamantly against this project, and there will be no dump going in hell if there was anything I could do about it. Okay? To have letters out there saying that the governing body was for something when I wasn't? And why wasn't it spoken about in public? And why wasn't it voted on in front of the public by the governing body? It all doesn't add up. So we need your help on where we go from here. I'm asking you. I really, truly am. I don't blame you for, for doing your job. But is there anything you could do to help the residents of Monmouth County on this? Anybody? Or is the protocol that you just don't answer? I don't know. We can't necessarily answer, but I can talk to you after the meeting. You can't talk to me after the meeting? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, I got a job to do, too. It's okay. This isn't the ninth inning. We're early in the ball game, people. We'll be okay, right? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. If there's, uh, if there's no more council uh, members here, uh, we're going to get back to the regular list. Uh, we did allow a little bit of leeway for each of the council members to speak longer. We are going to keep it at the two minutes at this point in time. So. Uh, please do not take any offense. I am probably going to cut you off if you're in the middle of reading anything. Um, we do have to get everybody in tonight. And again, if you don't feel like you got everything in, please submit a written uh, submittal. And the freelers will also re uh, review that. All right, the next person I have on my list is Saeed Hussein. No, I'm Lawrence August. Uh, we actually oh. have an order to go. Are you a council member? No. Okay, uh, wait till you're called. And then we'll have you come up. I'm Lawrence August. I have a problem. I can't stand up. I can't walk. I was here at 5 o'clock, so I have a pole position with my car. And I find what's going on here disgusting. Now, you want to hear me or you don't want to hear me? We, we are going to go in order, if you don't mind, sir. Yeah. Is, I promise you, the best things in life only take three right. minutes. And go many ahead. people are disappointed. But I have to say, this is only going to take one minute. Go ahead, sir. But are you on? Are you on the list? Just so we can cross you off, then? No, I'm not on the list. My name is Lawrence August. L a w r e n c e a u g u s t. Go ahead, sir. I live at 639 Oak Glen Road, Howell. I've lived there for 40 years. I remember traveling down Squawkin Road when there were trees on both sides of it. It was a beautiful road to travel down. And since the past 40 years, it's been slowly degenerated and being destroyed by special interest groups who have only their thing in mind, the best interest for them, the best interest for solid waste companies who want to destroy Howell Township. Now, I have to say one thing. If I get up here and say, hey, I think you guys are all wrong. Well, you know what? I may be wrong, but I'm only one. But if everybody in this room gets up and says the same thing. And everybody, like the, the gentleman, Mr. Walsh said, he goes to the supermarket, everybody agrees that this garbage dump and garbage people that own this garbage dump are going to destroy Howell Township and the aquifer. Shame on everybody concerned with this, except Mr. Walsh, who didn't put his name on all this garbage. Now. I've been here, I'm not going away, and I'm going to fight them. My next step, just so everybody knows we're all going to be on the same page, I'm going, I'm going to the Attorney General's office and complain about everybody who's not participating like they're supposed to. And those who are participating like they're supposed to, they're to be commended. And these people, my name isn't Donald Trump, but you're all fired. You're all fired. <laughs> Thank you. Saeed Hussein.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Said Hussain. I'm with D.W. Smith Associates on behalf of Mazza. Uh, I have a few questions, starting off with Mr. Ray. We're, we're not doing questions. Well, Only public comment. The comments are simple. Uh, 547 is only 33 foot wide right away. How are we proposing to make a left turn on eastbound from 547? That was question number one. Number two, Mr. Ward stated that there's no wetland on the site. However, he showed a plan that clearly shows a pond on the site. Would he consider that as wetlands? What would we call that pond as? Number three, detention basin or recharge basin or infiltration basin or whatever they may call. It is located inside the JCPNL right away. To the best of my knowledge, JCPNL does not allow anything as such. They have towers, which are tall towers, high transmission lines. They will never allow water to be sitting around at the base of those towers. I don't understand how that that could be allowed in this particular case. Next one is a fact that they have said they were utilizing small trucks to bring in material and large trucks to leave. Where are the large trucks coming from? If only small trucks are coming in, I mean, are they producing large trucks inside? They're assembling large trucks inside the warehouse? Simple question. Okay. Then, according to them, there's no wetlands on the site. Well, we have, we'll find that out down the road. That's not much of a problem. Uh, turning radii. The turning radii they show on their property are ridiculous, to say the least. 30 feet at the curb line when it meets Randolph Road. The trucks that they're talking about needs a minimum turning radius. SU-30, a single unit 30, which has a roll-off on it, needs a minimum radius of 42 feet. And uh, we're over two minutes, so Thank I you. just want a couple of minutes more. No, no we, we can't keep going on every single one. So if you want to submit, though, like I said, you can submit those additional comments uh, I, to I Mr. Newman. I certainly will do that because these are the, what I've seen so far are substandard. They do not meet any, any standards as such. I will turn that thing in. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Crystal Diaz, Alec Berger. Oh, that was already, that was the mayor's. Son. That was the mayor's son? I did not know that. Robert Nick Caston. Deputy Mayor got it. Carl Reichenbach. Carl Reichenbach. Reichenbecker. He's coming. My name's Carl Reichenbecker. My wife Nancy and I live at uh, 41 Brook Road, and uh, we, we refer to our street, like Randolph Road, as one of those pass-through streets. Those are the streets that everybody uses, commercial truck traffic, commercial truck traffic, 18-wheelers, uh, all sizes of trucks, <coughs> buses, school buses, all wanting to avoid one area. That's Route 9 in Lakewood. So they come around, and they come up Brook Road, and they come up uh, Arnold Road, and you're going to add all these other trucks to that. And and what somebody did say is, mark our words, these truckers are not going to sit on 547 coming in through Lakewood. They're going to come in uh, from Route 9, they're going to come in my street, and they're going to come in Arnold Road, and these streets can't handle this traffic. The other part that's more uh, worrisome for me is he misstated that. There's not just a stream. The Matinaconk River, the north uh, branch supplies drinking water for Brick Township, Point Pleasant Beach, Point Pleasant Borough. Uh, you're on, you have on your way coming a letter, no go, from Brick Township Municipal uh, Utility Authority telling you they don't want this contamination near their drinking water for their thousands of people, including, I got to say, my, uh, my grandchildren. Uh, and uh, 
Point Pleasant Beach was very positive about the same approach. Haven't spoken to the borough yet. But you're going to have all three communities who get their drinking water from that river, okay, and from that uh, whole estuary uh, complaining and saying they don't want it either. So we don't want it. The people who drink the water don't want it. Apparently the only people who want it are some politicians, okay, and, and we're just saying no. That's my two minutes. Thanks for your time. Okay. Good luck. You, oh, you had another time. Make, make a good decision in your heart. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Claudia Malik. Out. Thank you. Mm. Claudia Malik, 91 Vienna Road. Uh, I want to bring up um, the traffic. I'm not sure how this is going to work out with all our school buses using <laughs> Route 547. Oak Glen Road, and also um, commuters mixed in with over 500 trucks coming from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. down these roads. Uh, again, somebody mentioned, you know, our high schoolers, our high school students use Route 547 to get to school. Um, I'm just not sure where, where this is all going to work out for Hell Township. Um, I live right around the corner from this facility that's supposed to come in. Um, I have a well as well. <laughs> um, it's a shallow well. We all have shallow wells. I'm going to mention also um, the brooks. The, the map you had put up, I'm going to have to say there's more than just Dix Brook there. I'm going to name them. There are Dix Brook, Muddy Ford Brook, Haystack Brook, Polly Pod Brook. And all these branch into uh, the North Branch Matita Conk River, which flows into the Barnegat Bay. Um, I'm also going to bring up, you're saying, uh, debris uh, that's going to be housed there. Um, wood has glue. You have the compressed wood. Glue has formaldehyde. There's asbestos. All of this is going to leak into our, our wells eventually, maybe not today or tomorrow, but eventually. I'm going to bring up, um, in 1972, uh, there was a dump in Jackson. It was the Legler dump. Uh, that dump was 135 acres. 20 acres was used. It was originally developed into um, an underdeveloped area. Over time, homes were built close to this dump. Residents started complaining of uh, poor water quality. Uh, Contaminated waste leaked into the aquifer. Uh, these were shallow wells. We all have shallow wells. It was closed in 1980. People had lesions on their skins. They were sick. Children had cancer, and they all had the same kind of cancer. Um, and I'm sorry, you're, you're at your two, so okay. actually I let it go over a little bit. Um, okay. Anything else you want to submit, though? Like I said, don't feel, feel free to submit. Okay. Well, also, behind my property is Tar Kiln Creek. I left that one out as well. These all branch into each other. And also, there is a beautiful pond on Randolph Road, and it's called Arnold Pond. And there are <coughs> fish in there and turtles, and the box turtle yeah. is a, an endangered species. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rich Mertens. Good evening. My name is Rich Mertens. I live at 11 Ink Perry Lane in Howell. I do serve on the board, so I've been on the other side. I understand you guys are not the enemy here, but I am looking at this case as I would serving on the zoning board. You look at the positive criteria, and when I look and I use this site for my business, I drive in and out of this place a lot. There's a lot of traffic as there is right now, as, but you're looking down the road. This is going to be your traffic study. I understand we listen to your, you know, our, your reports at our meetings, but I'm very concerned. Once these trucks are permitted to come in, it is more than what these roads in this township can handle. And you're going to be putting the burden on the town 
to enforce weight limits, and these truck drivers are not going to listen. They're going to go where they want to, and I'm concerned about the people in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul Snyder. Thank you, Paul Snyder. I guess spoke earlier, or I asked a few questions earlier, so I won't reintroduce myself. I'd like to express concern with regard to the lack of transparency as to how this was handled, particularly with regard to the developer's agreement. In the July public notice the freeholders gave, they spoke of the applicant's willingness to put in a traffic signal and said a developer's agreement between the applicant and the County of Monmouth will be executed in conjunction with the Solid Waste Management Plan Amendment to substantiate all of the improvements that have been agreed upon, including the traffic signal. Developer's agreement in conjunction with the Solid Waste Plan Amendment well, what does in conjunction mean? It means together with, part of the, the, the same thing. Yet when we requested to see that developer's agreement, we were told no. The public can't adequately evaluate these traffic improvements, which are a key if they're not being allowed to see this developer's agreement. And we know it's drafted because the mayor's seen it. She indicated in her letter. Um, we also have a moving target here. You know, Mr. Ray wrote a traffic report that said there'd be 880 trucks a day, 440 in, 440 out. And that during peak hours, it would be particularly bad, one truck every 32 seconds. Well, he walked back on that just a little bit today. Still an awful lot of traffic, but where's the data that supports his decision to walk this back. How come the public hasn't seen this? The freeholder notice back from July said this was for a facility that was gonna take type 13 and 13 C waste. Presumably that's what you voted on in May. Now it's a different facility that's only gonna take type 13, 13 C waste. So you voted on something uh, very, very different. We're at two. My clients, in favor of reasonable development in the SED zone. My client's facility generates 800 trucks a year, 400 in, 400 out. We're talking about what my client generates in a year, in a day. This is not a suitable site. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gordon Gemma? Gemma. Gemma. Thank you. And I also spoke previously, so I'll forego the introduction. I'd just like to reiterate a copy. Uh, we'd like a copy of a notice of the hearing of May 18, 2017, when you took a vote to determine, in fact, what was officially given on the notice. We do note that on the August 7, 2017 letter from the clerk of Monmouth County to Mr. Newman, there was a request for an official statement from the Township of Howell to be deemed complete. If it wasn't deemed complete, how did you vote on it? Second, by the July 27, 2007 proposed amendment to the Monmouth County Solid Waste Management Plan, on the bottom of the second page, there is a statement that says the Township agrees with the uh, transfer station. We would hope that that's amended to clearly reflect what took place tonight and the statements of the Township, which are clear and unequivocal. To the, for that to stay in the amendment would be inappropriate and misleading to everyone. Uh, there were statements about this not being a, this being a um, sub-collector road not meant for heavy traffic. There was actually an email to Mr. Newman about that. I would just like for the record to read what a sub-collector road is. Pursuant to the master plan, it says, quote, provides passage to local streets and conveys traffic to collectors, provides frontage and access to residential lots, but also carries some through traffic to local streets, end quote. For that, you need a 60-foot right-of-way, which you don't have now. For a collector road, you need something substantially larger. It is not appropriate. I'd also like to point out that by the March 6, 2017 letter from Mr. Mayfield to Stuart Norman, he said the township will have 
uh, its support, provided you comply with all the professionals in-house and outside. We did not. Finally, Mr. Uh, Mayfield's letter of May 16th is from neither the council nor from the mayor. It's from the manager, who I understand is no longer employed by the Township of Howell. I would just like to bring up there are other comments made by the Environmental Commission, the most of which is uh, on the record, but one of them that hasn't been discussed is a request for a study as to why this is needed any place in Monmouth County, let alone here in Monmouth County. To date, there has not been any study provided as to the determined need for this facility in the county. We'd ask you finally, finally to take a look at Mr. Ray's uh, report, which has to be updated, and the public should have the backup data. And finally, as to the traffic reports, there is no report as to whether the traffic movements on site are safe, adequate, and appropriate given the types of use. We'll supplement the record with additional writings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Leon Flaster. Peter Yerum. Good evening. I'm Peter Yarum from the law firm of Scorinci Hollenbeck. I represent the Ocean County Landfill. At page five of Resource Engineering's request for inclusion, they state, quote, Howell Township does not list a transfer station as a type of use in its ordinance. That is false. They do list it as a use. They list it as a prohibited use. In section 18867, entitled Prohibited Uses in All Zones, of the, township tow of the Township of Howell. That ordinance states the following uses are prohibited throughout the township. Uses which involve the processing, handling, storage, incineration, or distribution of solid waste, including landfills and transfer stations. It should be disturbing to SWAC and to the freeholders that resource engineering refers to the Howell Township use ordinance it lists permitted uses and makes no mention of the fact that this is an expressly, specifically prohibited use in Howell Township. Next, the New Jersey Solid Waste Management Act requires that freeholders consider the existence of sufficient existing sites for solid waste facilities. In the 2009 Monmouth County Plan Amendment, it states from the freeholders and as approved by the DEP, quote, there remains adequate and excess capacity to continuing transferring bulky waste generated within Monmouth County to out-of-state disposal facilities. There are four facilities still authorized to accept this type of waste as the freeholders and DEP found there's adequate and excess capacity to accept this type of waste. Next, the activity which resource engineering tells you will take place at their proposed transfer station is illegal. They say they're going to take Monmouth County waste and the northern half of Ocean County waste. The receipt of any solid waste from Ocean County is against the law. Ocean County is a flow control county. What that means is that solid waste generated in Ocean County must be delivered either to the Ocean County facility or directly out of state. It is wrongful for them to do that and it should be rejected for this reason alone. <clears throat> Next. And I'm sorry, you're, Next. At, you're at your two. Yes. I, I just have one question for the board. One question. In that letter of, of August 7th from the freeholders, they say, I'm requesting SWAC reconsider, uh, <clears throat> reconsider this request. Has there been some written communication from the freeholders saying you don't need to reconsider this after their first request to reconsider? <clears throat> I don't have anything on hand right now, but I can. We can check, and I'll discuss with you. Are, are you fact. aware of any anything in writing from the free elders saying do not reconsider? I definitely. I can't necessarily answer that question at this point. You time. Don't I'm not aware. Okay. Thank you, Tina Flasky. <laughs> from a lot of flasters tonight um, I just want to reiterate on what we were oh, I'm sorry I just want to reiterate on what we were just talking about is I did put in an OPA request and from all the information that I asked to receive from the last uh, meeting to now there was no communication from the, the township saying that they didn't want you to reconsider that's de that definitely there is definitely no nothing like that. They want the last one was the letter that they uh, that he just spoke about where they asked for SWAC to reconsider this before it went back to the county. And I don't understand how come we're here today 
and you're not even you're not you're not going to vote on this or you're not going to reconsider what everybody is you know is talking about here and also what the freeholders have asked you to do that's all I have to say thank you Catherine Moore Did you also sign on, sir? No, I wasn't, I, I wasn't aware that the list okay. was going to Not go a problem. On. I just want to know if we needed to cross no, you off. I'm not. Okay. I'm t uh, they're allowing me to speak. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is John Aliano, 5 Dickens Court. I am president of the Woods End Manor Homeowners Association, and I'll be speaking in their behalf in the surrounding neighborhood of uh, Oak, uh, Lanes Pond Road and uh, parts of Amanda Lane. Um, what I'm going to do is I understand you guys are going to be considering the situation and bringing your, your thoughts to the to freeholders. So um, I, and, and I was under the impression that we'd be able to ask some more questions. So I'm going to ask the questions to you to use for your consideration when you make your determination. The material that's originating from both uh, Northern Ocean County and uh, you know, Monmouth County have to go past two stellar state-of-the-art recycling centers that are under capacity. Um, and they're all within, uh, well, the Monmouth County, uh, the Ocean County one's within five miles. Um, and so far as the uh, on-site water collection, uh, it's fantastic that it's going to be maintained on site. But when you have runoff and it's put underground into holding uh, facilities, that water is going to, you know, perk down. And if there's any uh, toxins that can't be digested by bacteria or whatever, it's going to enter the groundwater. There is a Superfund site 1.5 miles from this site. There is also another Superfund site two miles from this site. The one on um, Max, Maximum Southern Road is about two miles away, and then you have the uh, landfill, the Howell landfill that was closed, which is about 1.5 miles. Even though there may not be a stream on site, there's definitely feeder streams that uh, go into that area and, and feed uh, drinking water supplies, not to mention uh, uh, shallow wells and, and wells in the area that have been well established. Uh, additionally, we have to understand that there is a process in, in, I'm sorry, my two no, minutes no, already? No, no, yeah, that's just the 30 second count. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I want to thank you very much, but you know, again, uh, traffic flow and all these other uh, items that have been brought up uh, need to be really considered because uh, the traffic study was nowhere near complete. And uh, I have 27 years in law enforcement. I ran traffic safety division, and I know where you do a traffic study. You don't do it just one day in one spot. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Johnson. We're not going to be transferring. T we're not going to be transferring time. No, no, if we're not making up the rules, um, it's, it's, we're not going to, because if this starts happening, then we're just going to have continual transfers. Now, what can be done, like I said, if you need to submit the rest of your questionings, it can be submitted just the same as this record's being submitted to the freeholders. So you just need to submit those over to... I'm Robert Johnson, Oak Glen Road, and uh, I just got to say a few things that you guys, I don't know if you're thinking about it or looking at it. This facility is on the end of Randolph Road. It's right on the end. People don't understand that. This little tiny 10-acre lot, you guys are proposing this many trucks to be processed in a short period of time on this tiny acre lot. Well, let me tell you what's really going to happen. This tra truck traffic is going to spill out on the 547, and the problem there is a lot of impatient motorists, um, they're going to have themselves a wonderful head-on collision when they're trying to get past these trucks. That's what you guys need to think about when you consider this, because it will be on you one day. You're going to own this when you realize in the paper that somebody got wiped out going around some trucks that we made a quick approval on. And... Uh, it's just scary to think that just somebody trying to, I, I, you know, I'm for everybody trying to make a living and, and get ahead in this world, but I got to tell you, at what cost? You're, you're upsetting so many thousands of people around this area. Uh, the value of our properties, it, it's upsetting. Wow, I just can't believe what we're going to have to put up with just so this guy can make a little extra money over here. Um, I want you to consider the truck traffic is way too much for this tiny little lot that's on the end 
of Randolph Road, which, believe it or not, Randolph Road is an extremely busy road through residential traffic. Uh, Lakewood being the size that it is and how overbuilt that it is, Randolph Road has tons and tons of traffic going down it all day long. I live one block over. I see the amount of traffic there. To add these trucks to it is absolutely a train wreck waiting to happen. Please consider the smart thing, not the dumb thing. Thank you. Thank you. Ted Schwartz. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the council. I apologize. I have a slightly sore throat. I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, I'm with the law firm of Scorinci and Hollenbach, and I'm here representing uh, a citizen in Monmouth County, Britt Rayner, who lives at Church Lane in, in Middletown. Um, I think that eminent counsel that preceded me uh, dealt with the uh, due process issues, which from uh, practicing over 50 years in the state of New Jersey as a lawyer, I find very, uh, very offensive. And uh, I think that's something that has to be reconsidered by not only SWAC, but it's not SWOC, it's SWAC. And uh, it should be reconsidered by the board and by, by, the, uh, by you folks. But in any event, there were a lot of people that preceded me that dealt with <clears throat> a lot of the issues that are important to this project, and I don't want to be repetitive. I was trying to sit there and s scratch out the ones that I was going to talk about, which are a lot. I do have respect for the engineers and professionals here, and sometimes, you know, they make mistakes too, just like lawyers make mistakes. But I think Peter brought up an interesting point of the prohibited use in town, the ordinance, which apparently nobody even knew about, well, it was never addressed in the uh, reports that were prepared by, by Mr. Ward. But in any event, I looked at the SEC zone, SED zone, and looked at the plans. I'm very familiar with transfer stations. I understand exactly how they operate and how they should be built and so on and so forth. But, you know, you guys miss the fact that you're gonna, your setbacks are wrong, your impervious coverage is wrong, your outdoor storage is wrong, your um, storage areas, your circulation plan, and so on and so forth, I can go on and on. You don't have an agreement with JCP&L, as pointed out by the engineer from Mazda, to use the, uh, to come close proximity to the towers. But the most important thing is the truck traffic. And having dealt with sites like this over my 50 years, I find it rather shocking to see a proposal like this for this type of transfer station. As I calculated the engineering, the traffic report. You're at two, Mr. Schwartz. 75 truck movements a day in this site without counting the recycling center that's presently there. You are at two minutes, Mr. Schwartz. Well, I just have a couple of environmental things that are wrong in this report. There are threatened and endangered species on the site. This is dedicated as an environmentally sensitive planning area by the DEP. The sewage waste is not adequately dealt with. They talk about putting in a, some type of system. I don't know what it is. And probably the most important thing, which really troubles me to no end, is how can, how can anybody evaluate the traffic when we don't even know what the development agreement looks like? Nobody knows. It's a big mystery. I've asked you for it on a telephone conversation. I've asked Stuart for it, can't have it. And I think that's critical because I don't believe these traffic improvements are going to be made to do an intersection and what you really need here, you're talking in excess of a million dollars. And this, this little place doesn't deserve that type of treatment. <clears throat> anyway, we'll deal with it at the freeholder level. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Yeah, we're okay. Brandon Rio.
Hello again, Brandon Rio from number three, Brook Road in Howell. Okay, uh, let's see. A lot of stuff was already said. I made a speech based on last two days ago where I could have five minutes, so I'm going to give you the abbreviated version. Okay. Um, I've been living on this corner for 36 years, the corner of uh, Brook Road, Allenwood Road, and uh, Lakewood Allenwood. And um, over that time, I've seen a serious increase in the traffic. I mean, when I first moved there, you could have camped out in the middle of the intersection. Now, you know, you can't even go out to your mailbox, okay? I've been, uh, I've been uh, uh, involved with some very close near misses pulling into my own driveway. I'm just offset to this corner. These trucks come flying around. They don't even stop, okay? They come flying around. When they do stop, they're using their engine brakes. Okay, that happens to be an ordinance against this. You know, there's, there's laws against that. They do it anyway, okay? Um, I think that the reason, the most of the reasons why uh, the increase has happened is um, there's a couple bullet points here. This is Doug French dirt operation you got going here. Currently has created a steady flow of dump truck traffic anyway. They use every and all streets as shortcuts. They run their engine brakes. They're never, they never go with the speed limits. Um, I actually flagged a couple of guys down at the stop site, begging them to please stop using their engine. But I only live right on a corner there. This is my life. I've been here for 36 years. And, and you're telling me you're going to dump another 1,200 trucks on the road additionally? Okay. Okay. Now, um, one thing people left, well, that was brought up briefly, but only um, uh, another, another uh, reason why this uh, increased traffic has um, been created is, and what we're all leaving out is um, the, uh, the unfettered extreme development now taking place in Lakewood. Okay? Now, a vast majority of the residents who live in Lakewood, they come down from 195, down Squonkum Road, and they, then they take all the shortcuts possible to get down to the uh, county line corridor. You're at two minutes, sir. So, you know, that, that in of itself, without the trucks, is enough to consider. Lakewood is still developing. Do we really know what the limit, what, what that traffic flow, did you consider that when you did your little uh, report in April? Did you say, did you, did right, you look at it and go, hey, maybe, uh, you know, sir, uh, Lakewood's going to double in size and they're going to even have twice as many trucks, not even when you get the damn thing built. Sir, thank Listen, you. we're getting railroaded. But, and the last thing I'm going to say is, everybody here, if this was happening in your backyard, would you like it? Would you like it? No, you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. Thank Nobody you, would. Thank you, sir. It's wrong. It needs to stop. you got to go somewhere else with this crap. Thank you. Elizabeth Anderson. Bob Walsh. Oh, he spoke already. Felix Flaster. Good evening. Am I on the speaker? Yes. yes. My name is Felix Flaster, and I've been on Randolph Road for 60 plus years. Both of my children were born there. We lived there in that bungalow that's still there. We started a small business. We is Arnold Steel now. He's well known all over the state. And I'm going to take, I'm going to, I don't want to insult the expert, but I want to know what he was drinking when he made his report. <laughs> There's no way, absolutely no way, and we've handled trucks, we do trucking. There's absolutely no way that you can handle this amount of trucking and trucks in and out of that space even if you did it 24 hours a day. Too many things have been, have been lost in the calculation of seeing if it was possible. The first thing you're going to have in the morning, you're going to have truck waiting for this to be open. They'll be around 
all the way around Squawkum Road. And they will stop the traffic coming and going. And then when and then when they go in, there'll be more on the same line. And nobody unless you're gonna have five policemen there to take care of this on an ongoing basis, uh, this is the way it's that's what's going to happen. Our firm does trucking and we handle approximately eight thousand ton of material a year. And that's and it and it takes four hundred trucks one way and 400 trucks the other way. You're talking about, what's the number again? I forgot it. it, it, it 1,200. 1,200 trucks a day? I mean, this is, you have to be crazy to even believe that's possible. A week. A week. A week. A week. Okay, well, even a week. Are you, are you two minutes, sir? Thank uh, you. Well, no, I'm not done. I, I know. I know, but if you have anything else, you can submit well, afterwards. I'm, I'm older than you, okay? I understand so you're that. Wait for me to finish. I understand that, okay? sir. But it, it, like I said, everybody's going to get the two minutes, so. Well, I'm the last one on the list. No, there's still no, another 12 or quite three. a few more. Well, we just wasted that. Half a minute. So, thank you, sir. No, you can, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving. Sir, yet. I don't want to have to have, have you removed. Well, okay. I, I, listen, this is, these are the rules that were laid out before okay, we started this. We own, I own, we, I, we own the property next door, the 100 acres that used to be called the stud farm. No, it's 100 acres. All right. <laughs> we, uh, please, we do have to move on, sir. Um, I apologize, but anything else you have to say, you can submit written. No, 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 this is no. Uh, very important. It's, 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 I was approached to sell a portion of that property for a venture which now I know is this venture. And I say, no, I'm not going to sell it. I'm not selling a, a small piece. I, I'll sell the whole piece or none at all. And I say, what are you going to do with this anyhow? And I was told it was for these facilities. And I said, what, you're going to get, you're going to get a permit for doing this kind, for having this kind of operation here? All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And, and, and the answer was, yes, I will. Yes, we will, because we have, we have pulled. Thank you, sir. All right. That's, sir, sir, you're, all you're doing right now is cutting into somebody else's time. So no, that's not how it works here. Um, if if you have anything else, please submit it separately. I don't want to have to ask again. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Theodore Van Ness. Hi, uh, my name is Tad Van Ness. I live at 1112 Lakewood Farm in Dale Road. See, I got a lot of trees in my yard, and I would love to burn the leaves, but I can't because it's against the ordinances, right? But yet, we got people with millions of dollars that says we can do whatever we want in spite of the ordinances of our town. You see, I'm a responsible citizen in the town of Howe. This is the second home I live in now, okay? And, uh... I, it took me over six months so I can get a permit because of the county. My town works with me, but sometimes the county will do different things. But they'll approve something like this. But for me to put an addition in and to go through all this hassle with septic, was told, and I'm just a citizen. I pay my taxes. I pull permits. I do what I'm supposed to do. I live right on Lakewood Farmingdale Road. Pioneer Pipe, I had them parking their trucks in my yard, okay? Because I want to be a cooperative citizen of my town. But I cannot be here today and let this thing go on in the town that I live in. It, these trucks are going to go right through the front of my house. I got trucks turning around in my yard all the time. I got p signs posted. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm going to get that more and more now. What am I going to do? Have to put up gates? 
Now, these companies come into town and they're not willing to do what is necessary to try to help the citizenry, to make it a little easier for us. Are they going to do a traffic study of the other intersections? That's going to affect us all. Are they proposing to widen the road or anything? No. They just want to look at that one road for, for their trucks. And that's it. And I, I believe that my township is against this. My citizens in my town are against this. And I am pleading to the county and to anybody that could help stop this. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if people would start picking it if they started building it. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Carl Gigenbach. Edward Brielle. Scott Decker. William Maury. Mally. I'll make my uh, statement to the freeholders pretty short. Um, I'm going to touch on uh, school busing more than anything else because everything else I think has been more than adequately covered. Um, my wife is Mary Rose Malley. She happens to be on the Board of Education. Uh, she also happens to be in charge of school busing. Um, I, I know she has some concerns because we talk because we're married, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, my children get picked up at 10 of 8 in the morning. I live on Oakland Road, around the corner from where this facility is going to be. My children get dropped off at my house at 10 after 2. And th both these hours are within the working hours of the proposed facility. Um, besides everything else, the, uh, all my other concerns, which are numerous, I'm back to the trucking issue and school buses. When I see a 40-ton dump truck barreling down my road and the school bus has stopped in front of my house and it veers around that school bus almost taking out my mail mailbox I get on the phone and I get on the phone to the police usually they're going so goddamn fast I can't get their number you think that that's going to lessen with this application no it is going to exponentially multiply to the point where someone, and it is going to be a child, gets killed in one of these school buses. And if you don't think that's the truth, wait and see. Thank you, sir. Louis Toscano. Uh, Lou Toscano, 18 Glacier Drive. I saw the PowerPoint and some words came to my mind when I saw the PowerPoint, like slick, uh, almost funny, some of the stuff. Something, someone said it's going to be better for Howell. Like, uh, that's ri ridiculous to me. Um, other things are called to mind, like pull a fast one. Someone's trying to do that. Who's it going to benefit? It's going to benefit whoever owned it. And I'm not sure about the things I've read on the internet about, I don't know, something sounds shady. And pull a fast one. And I also work at Brick Township Municipal Utilities Authority. And we take water from the Matita Conk River. Okay, and this... I'm sure even though you say that, oh, yes, we're retaining the storm water on site. Okay, so what? It does percolate down, like someone else said. It goes in there. It's going to go into these little streams and go into and harm possibly these other, uh, well, there's nearby people that have uh, wells. So I can't see that being very good. Uh, the trucks, I'm sure they're going to be going as fast as possible. I used to work at uh, 
what is it, for sweat uh, health department, uh, down 547. Uh, where is it? You know, in 93. And man, the trucks are always fast. They're trying to get their roll offs out, boom, in and out of there. We used to have to try and, you know, when they had illegal stuff there, we'd have to write down the DEP number. Uh, I, I go down Randolph Road now, uh, one light there. I don't know how that's going to affect the other intersections that are south of that. Uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Paulette, Brandon, Bryden, Paulette Brado, Winding Brook, Mobile Home Park. I live, <clears throat> I live right off 547. I will not be able to get in or out of my trailer park with the truck traffic. I was almost killed Monday with a tractor trailer crossing the double, the double line and putting me into an accident. Again, your Monmouth County um, Health Department will be on speed dial by all these people that have represented themselves today for the air pollution, etc. I've survived cancer once. I don't need this in my environment to have to go through cancer treatment again. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. <laughs> Robbie Everett. Oh, here we go. Hmm. There it is. Use the kids as props. <clears throat> My name is Robbie Everett. I am 11 years old. I live at 13 James Howell Court, Howell, New Jersey. When my mom told me about this project, my first question was, why not use the faculty in Tin Falls? To me, that location makes more sense. It's closer to highways that these types of trucks already use. When I asked her to take me for a drive to the location in Howell, I pointed out trucks would need to use 547, a two-lane roadway, and I asked, what happens when there's an accident? They would be going on roads with a lot of houses not designed for truck traffic. But doing this at the Tin Falls location will allow easy access to Route 18, Route 34 from Shafto Road, a four-lane road, Route 35 and from Route 34, the Garden State Parkway. Please consider using land and roadways already in structure for this type of faculty. It's only 14 miles away from this faculty. The trucks passing through are on Route 9, 195 in the Garden State Parkway to exit 105, not two-lane county highways. Shafto Road is a four-lane road. Also, what roads will be used from Route 9? I think the stump is really bad for the town. Yeah. Tiffany Campbell. Okay. Girline Dumay. Can I take that person's spot? Did, did you sign on the list? Did, did you sign on the list at all? Let us just finish off the list real quick, if you don't mind, ma'am. Nick Husker. I'll do 
the big and tall uh, three minutes, if you don't mind. Um, my name is Nick Huzzer. I'm a member of the Green Team, the Environmental Commission, and the Planning Board. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Uh, we submitted a letter to you August 18th, 2017, and still to this day, we have not had a response. And I will uh, give it over to my uh, colleague here, who is also a professional engineer. I'm also a licensed site remediation professional in the state of New Jersey, who is also on the Environmental Commission. And we just want to know why these uh, Environmental Commission uh, requests and, um, you know, quite frankly, um, everything that we asked was never replied to. Michael. As a member of the Environmental Commission, we have serious concerns. My first name is Michael Poland. The Environmental Commission has serious concerns about the proposed facility as outlined in this letter. The boards and commission of the township, our comments as well as public concerns should be taken into consideration by the board of chosen freeholders in evaluating whether an amendment to the solid waste management plan should be approved. At this time, it appears that these comments and concerns have not been solicited and are not being heard despite the fact that numerous citizens and groups have indicated that they are opposed. There will be a significant and substantial amount of increased truck traffic at an already dangerous and busy intersection. The addition of a shoulder to the road is insignificant in addressing these concerns. In addition, the increased truck traffic along Randolph Road and Route 547 will cause significant delays on roads traveled for school, recreation, and work. Adding a traffic light will not alleviate these issues, but rather may cause additional issues. In addition, Randolph Road is one of a few that allow access to the Ramtown area, which is already burdened with significant traffic delays during rush hour. The amount of noise generated from these operations is significant concern not only at the facility, but along Randolph Road, Route 547, and to neighboring properties, including residential areas. The potential odors from a waste transfer station are also a concern to the neighboring properties and downwind parcels. Leaching of any waste brought to this site is concern to the groundwater of the township, as well as the potable wells to surrounding properties. The Commission has not reviewed any plans to contain releases or discharges that may occur from on-site machinery or trucks. There is concern regarding construction debris as impacts to this material may have occurred prior to transportation to the proposed facility, thus the potential for contamination to the site's soil, surface water, and groundwater exists. It does not appear that the facility has any public water connections. There is significant concern for fire control measures at the proposed facility. And it is our understanding that the proposal would be adding another transfer facility to an area that has currently four permitted transfer facilities that accept this type of waste within an approximately 20 mile radius. According to the NJDEP I'm solid. Sorry. Time is up on that. So, um, but again, just. I have the big control. Yeah, I know. You're at the, we, allowed the, we actually allowed an additional, additional minute on it as well. So you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, and then, of course, you can submit that again to Mr. Newman, as was indicated. And, uh, ma'am, ma'am, we are at the end of the list. Uh, the one that stood before, if you want to come up, you'll be the last individual to speak tonight. <sighs> Elaine Taylor. I own Shangri-La Farm on Maxim Southerd Road. Uh, no one has um, spoken about the environmental impact on my organic farm. So I thought I would mention that any airborne harmful chemicals that may come my way as the wind blows, and of course the chemicals in the wells, should that happen, is a grave concern when I'm watering the crops, the organic crops, and I'm very concerned with that. And if there are any health risks, risks to my customers as a result of that, I will have to sue Monmouth County and the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Environmental Protection, because I will not stand for this. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to thank everybody for their questions, their comments, and coming to this meeting tonight. 
May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? That's this is where we're at right now. That's what we just finished up. Thank you, DJ. We have a motion. Nope. We have a motion. We're not closing the meeting. Yes, but the meeting's over. This should be a open to public comment. That's what we we just, were there. We just went through that. No. In general, it's it's regards to agenda items only when you do open public comment. But that's what we just went through. So you didn't, uh, you skipped the reorganization? we not doing no. that. Oh, okay, you never stated that. Excuse me. Sure, Dominic Mazza. Um, you skipped the reorganization? We're not doing the reorganization okay. this evening. No, I was just asking that. So when will the next meeting be? Uh, Stuart? Okay. Sorry. Not, to, not a problem. You just didn't mention it, so I'm sorry. Not a problem at all. Thank you. Can I just, before you close the meeting, yeah, can, you, can you announce when the next meeting is going to be at the freeholders in reference to this so that everybody here is aware yeah. of where well, they have to come next? They don't even know. Nobody today is really going to... I believe... It's uh, the, next, the next meeting for the freeholders, which has been noticed, is February 22nd. All right, thank you. We're, we're finished off with that, with all that. Like I said, I just announced the meeting date. I have a motion. I have a second. Okay. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned. I want to see Jeff.